everybody and welcome to the Weiner Wellness Virtual Summit. It is Wednesday and we are so excited to be here. With me this morning is Jamie Dorley, CEO and owner. Welcome, Jamie. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Tracy. Good morning, Dr. H. Thanks so much for having me on again. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. And we have Dr. Joseph Honigman from the Weiner Wellness Center. He is a lifestyle and wellness oriented practitioner. So we're so great. So great to have you here, doctor. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Tracy. Hello, Jamie. Good morning. Good morning. So, guys, we have a jam-packed session this morning. Uh, this The wellness event has been going on all week. We've had great lectures, and I just wanted to hear from you what you thought of the week so far and what's coming up. Well, I thought the week so far has been fantastic. I love that the teams really come together. I, knew, I love the new live stream. I love the quality of the speakers, not only with our team internally at the Weiner Wellness Center, um, nutritional frontiers and then all the national speakers that we have the privilege to be educated by and in the past we didn't have that and what mm -hmm. i've gotten is a lot of great feedback from the clients and customers and patients because now they can watch all the workshops or pick and choose the ones that they like the most at the comfort of their home and even sometimes don't tell their boss you know <laughs> at the comfort of their office so um great way to be educated and I love the incredible lineup of speakers, um, so many different backgrounds. It's just been fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, I had someone message me yesterday. She said, I hope my boss leaves the office so I can turn this on my phone. I was like, you should just turn it on for everybody. It's like a corporate wellness yeah, program. Yeah, put the headset on. They can't tell. <laughs> That's right. You might be just educating yourself. Well, Dr. Hogman, I know. At Nutritional Frontiers, they just put their headset <laughs> on and go about their business. That's right. And, you know, I have people texting me from from NF as well saying, you know, great lecture. So they are listening uh, while they work. So it's kind of like listen while you work. Dr. Honigman, I know you were you were up on the first Saturday um, and now you've kind of had the privilege, I hope, to be able to watch some of the speakers. But of course, you're probably seeing patients as well. Any favorites, any comments? Well, yes, um, I actually did watch uh, Judy Minkovitz uh, Detox Solutions for Vaccines, and I watched yours as well on the lymphatic system. I have just a few comments on that for, for Judy. Um, uh, I'll tell you, you know, I got what I got out of that. Yeah, it's amazing. Organic black coffee <laughs> is good for me. <laughs> and... DMG is a marvelous supplement for a variety of things. So mm -hmm. I was thinking about that. And, you know, um, at times it was a little hard to follow, even for me. And I have a master of public health degree uh, right. in epidemiology. Uh, and I was thinking that it would be really cool if, like, in the future, you and possibly Jamie or Joe could actually interview her and kind of direct her and maybe even beforehand say, hey, I know this is difficult, but can we get this to an eighth grade level? <laughs> right. Right. So when she started out with this is eight years of research, I was like, oh, now I know why I'm so lost. I was like, let's back up. So no, she was wonderful. And, and I agree. It was it was a high level lecture. Um, but I do think there were some good points, like you said, that came out of it. The DMG. She is hands down such a fan of that. And, you know, when I first started speaking with her, you know, she wasn't, you know, she knew about the product, but like she said, I, she forgot about it, you know, because she has been doing research on all kinds of nutraceuticals. And when I sent her the book and I sent her a sample and she was like, oh, this is it. This is the key. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she has become one of our biggest advocates for Nutritional Frontiers with the NRDMG chewables. And I get questions and comments and people calling me all the time now, like, how do I get this? How do I get this? So uh, lots of great things when somebody at that level can speak to, you know, and, and you know this, Dr. Hahnemann, because you have a, a master's in it. I mean, you can speak to the biochemistry of how it really works and that it's not mysticism, that it's real science. When you asked her to explain the retrovirus uh, system, and she, at that point, she answered that question, uh, very succinctly and, and easy to understand, you know, about how uh, the RNA forms the DNA and then uh, enters into our system, takes over the DNA of our system. But the most interesting thing about that was that it doesn't need to be expressed when she talked about that. Right. And I think that's worth watching 
for that alone, for everybody to watch that. Mm -hmm. The expression you know, of the gene. The you know, nice expression of the gene, right? right? These uh, great minds think alike. So we do have her on the speaker circuit for the professional training event at Nutritional Frontiers, I believe later this year in the fall. And that's some great feedback. So it uh, reminds me of when we saw Dr. Bland speak. You know, a lot of people would leave there and their head was spinning, right? So we mm -hmm. had to direct him a little bit so that uh, you say eighth grade, I say bring it to a kindergarten level. Mm -hmm. And then they can get into some of the deeper research, but we need that foundation knowledge that um, how do we apply that in the clinic, right? That's really what we're looking for and how do we apply it in our lives. But fantastic education from everybody. And um, I really like the topic of the brain-gut connection. I think we talk about it and we assume that everyone knows it. 99% um, of the doctors out there are not aware of it. This is really brand new research, all within the last 10 to 15 years. So when you look at the brain chemistry, the brain chemistry is also the gut chemistry. And you look at the number one condition people suffer with and the number one prescribed medications are all the antacid, digestive meds, over-the-counter prescription, whatever it may be. And how common is it, Dr. H, to see someone come in and the first thing they complain about is their gut health, right? Um, if it's bloating, if it's gas, constipation, diarrhea, or any manifestation of those types of symptoms, and including maybe some of the later things that we we're talking about on the round table with some of, of the autoimmune conditions. So do you find it to be very common in the, in the practice? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. The, the, the two, what I would consider the two biggest underlying uh, risk factors for uh, disease, for problems, the, uh, the root cause are going to be uh, a stress, anxiety in the adrenal glands and the gut. And there it is, you know, the gut brain connection. And it's sort of like, which comes first? You know, is it the stress and the anxiety? If you're in stress, if you're under stress and anxiety, you're not digesting your food. You're in the sympathetic, the fight or flight mood, mode. You're more interested in not being lunch than eating lunch. And so, you know, once you're in the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxation mode, that's normally called the relax and digest system so once you're there and you're relaxing and you're digesting your food better obviously your gut is going to be better stress affects that and then the other way around you yeah know, this is such a hot topic that we have speaking yeah. about every day that are going to hit this topic i believe uh jeff nisnik applied kinesiologist at the wine and wellness center uh will be addressing this at nine o'clock today is that correct yes 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 he will He's yeah. going to be talking about colon health, IBS, ulcerative colitis. So he's going to get specific on some things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's good to know because uh, I was sharing with some people the other day at the wellness center when I was doing all the consults, it became more and more common to see younger adults that had already had GI surgeries, right? And autoimmune conditions have just skyrocketed the last five to 10 years. So I'm glad he's addressing this again. The great news is people are texting me right now. Are you guys accepting new patients at the Wellness Center? Absolutely. All they need to do is give them a call down there, 412-922-WELL. That's 412-922-9355. And depending on what your chief issue is, they're going to direct you to the right healthcare professional. So we have Dr. Orbach doing all the structural and functional medicine um, on the physical side including chiropractic, stretching, um, myofascial release, trigger point therapy. So he does more of the, the structural medicine. We have Dr. Hahnemann doing the functional medicine, nutrition, and chiropractic. We have Jeff doing the allergy elimination and also the applied kinesiology and Adam doing muscle therapy. And we even have Ashley Rossi joining the team doing uh, functional weight loss. So we have professionals for you and we help customize the program for you. But we need to get you down there. Well, that's very exciting to hear about Ashley because uh, she's a great practitioner. She did all the free Zyto scans on Saturday, and she's doing free Zyto scans again. I think we have a couple of slots left. So I'll post that link if you want to sign up. Um, come in, get a scan, find out what products your body's responding to, and then chat with Ashley a little bit. And then if they want a follow-up consultation with any of the practitioners, they can schedule that. So that's really exciting news. Yeah, she's doing a great job. She lives apart. Um, 
you know, she has great experience with a naturopathic degree. She has tremendous uh, success with people that are really struggling, not only with weight loss, but also the underlying causes of what that may be. And we learned so much about this at the seminar recently on weight loss, a functional medicine approach. And I like that they go really, really specific on what each person needs and customize it for them compared to all these programs that are out there that are all cookie cutter. And folks, this is a program you can implement right away, get results right away, and continue on this long term. It's not a quick fix. It's a long term solution to the problem. Excellent. So today we have a great lineup of speakers and I'm very excited for today because we have our very own Jeff Nisnik coming up at 9 a.m. Um, we talked a little bit about that. He's doing colon problems, IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and natural solutions. And then Dr. Honigman, you're up at 10 a.m. It's always a good time to clean from the inside out. Let's detox. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be talking about today? Sure. This is a very popular topic this wellness week. I can tell you that, right? Uh, Mikey G did, did it on Saturday. You talked about it with the lymphatic system, which is the Rodney Dangerfield of the uh, <laughs> systems. I agree with you 100%, 100%. It just doesn't get any respect, and it should. Um, Judy McVince talked about detoxification and vaccines. I think, Jamie, you're going to be talking a little bit about it when you're talking about, you know, your approach to weight loss. So, you know, I think you guys covered everything. So I'm going to go to lunch. I'm going to get a, an early break. Uh, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and I'll come back after this is all over. <laughs> well, all we serious. need you to break it down in, in the way that your brain is just amazing. So I think we skimmed the surface, but I really want to hear what you have to say about these. Yeah. So, so I, what I'm, what I want to do right now is just give you some, uh, just some amazing statistics. First of all, uh, why do we even need to detox, especially if we're healthy, right? If we're healthy and our liver is working right and our kidneys are doing well and our other organs of elimination and detoxification are doing okay, why? And it's because we've been exposed to an overabundance of toxins, unlike anyone has ever seen before unlike it's ever been in history it's coming from everywhere it's coming from the air we breathe it's coming from the chemicals that we're being exposed to it's coming from the food and the water that we drink and i'm going to and there's others which i will discuss about in my talk but here's the thing this is how bad it can get every year for every american there are three pounds of toxins sprayed onto our food every person every year three pounds of toxins and studies have wow. shown that this can uh these toxins can cross the placenta and cause things like um um to the babies uh, and they may wind up with uh, even things as bad as cancer uh for example now there are others air pollution so mm -hmm. you may have heard this that air pollution is responsible for the death of one out of every 11 people worldwide but this is what's important for us at least for me probably you as well here in pittsburgh in allegheny county it's especially bad pittsburgh is the only city east of the mississippi that's been included in the 25 worst cities for air pollution which makes us worse than chicago and chicago has about seven to eight times our population it even makes us worse than philadelphia we're you know, pretty close we're a little you're worse. crossing yeah. lines there you're, you're crossing lines philadelphia and anything come on doc yeah, yeah. that's exactly what i'm saying we got a little debate now you're going over the line a little bit you're insulting us a little bit here you wait know? wait wait I, I, now you but wait there's that's more insult and i want to make this point i love pittsburgh and all but, my friends who come to visit me love pittsburgh as well and yes i was born in philadelphia <laughs> but, that, oh, but i've been here long enough uh you know my love for for frick park and and in the surrounding area uh, i am a true fan a true lover of the city and so are my friends however you know here's the problem Allegheny County in Pittsburgh, our rates are, of cancer are twice that 
in terms of lung cancer because yeah. of that. So and I think so like, in that area. With your master's in public health, when you you know you present all this research and data, I get it. I think most people feel like, well, it's not going to affect me because it doesn't affect me today. So let's just think about how people feel when they're toxic, right? Absolutely. Brain That's what we're going to be talking about. Skin issues, weight, right? Yeah. Lack of energy, not sleeping well. What about chronic or acute pain, right? I was just talking to someone recently and uh, he stopped drinking soda. He lost 20 pounds, but more importantly, he says, all my joint pain went away, right? So I think we got to really um, show people that, you know, you may not be sick, but more than likely you have high levels of toxicity. And that's what Dr. Hahnemann is going to help you do is come up with a strategy to one is slow down the intake of toxins by choice, because regardless of what we're exposed to on every day, the things we voluntarily ingest every day far exceeds what we're going to be exposed to in the environment. So I think people got to limit or eliminate what they're ingesting that is toxic and that's their drinks and their food and their medications over the counter prescription and even some of the toxic supplements, right? So you gotta have a strategy in place of limiting what's coming in and then support your body's detoxification every day in a healthy way because the body's solution to pollution is dilution. So if you're holding a lot of fluid or fat outside the cells, that's what your body's trying to do. It's trying to dilute these toxins so you can excrete them and it's not a really good strategy so something as simple that i've been doing is a scoop of power cleanse with a scoop of the lean greens every day i also been cheating on you a little bit tracy i throw in a scoop of magnesium complete the new mac complete powder and um, that's my new shake every day i do and the great thing is you can continue to do this because we're exposed to toxins every day and this is nothing new I love that study from the EPA going back to 1982. Tracy was a little toddler back then, and me and you were teenagers, I believe, Dr. H. So back in 82, the EPA did that study, and they showed over 30,000 people throughout the U.S. had 100% positive results when they tested them for toxins, five of the most common toxins. It hasn't gotten any better, right? So Absolutely. I love the fact you're addressing it today. I'm excited for it. Yes. So so the power greens and, and the power cleanse and the lymphatic drainage, Mikey G spoke about it. I know you're going to speak about it. Tracy spoke about it. So they're going to get, you know, they're going to hear about those, those supplements a lot. And of course, I'll talk a little bit about them as well, although um, you've already gone over it with great detail and I'll probably after I go over, be referring uh, the listeners to your talks to hear even more about those particular supplements because they're awesome. But we're also going to be talking about many other solutions, many things that you have to do. So, you know, stay tuned because it is important to try to uh, minimize your exposure to these toxins. I know it's impossible to do it entirely, but we can do our best. And I'm going to give strategies on how to do that and also about the food and lifestyle factors that play a major role as well. So it's going to be an all around approach to, you know, how to detoxify your body. And you can do this any time of year, although this is a particularly good time because why? It's spring and we always think about spring cleaning. So that's season's right around the corner, right Dr. H, so we got to get ready. Yeah, you Be guys need to look good in those bikinis. Oh, I got a new one this year, so I can't wait to reveal it, you know. I'm wearing one I can't of wait to see it either. One piece, there I'm you go. Patriot, red, white, and blue, Captain America, something along those lines. But I don't want to give a spoiler alert. Oh, by but, the way, know, the is, I'm a humble guy, but, you know, I did that presentation the other day on reading labels for food, mm -hmm. supplements, and medication. I got some really good feedback. So that's going to be one I continue down the road and keep updating because it's very challenging for most people. I always say um, eat food that doesn't have a label on it, right? That's probably the best way to start. And with supplements, you better make sure you're buying it from a doctor. Of course, Nutritional Frontiers, but we carry great lines at the Wine Wellness Center. You need to buy your vitamins and supplements and food-based supplements from a healthcare professional. Don't buy them from the store. Don't buy them online. Buy them from a healthcare professional. It makes a big difference. The last place we want to ingest mm -hmm. toxins is from a supplement. And a lot of the store brand ones are loaded with toxins. 
Yeah, and that's a big question I get all the time. You know, I, I had somebody message me yesterday. She's pregnant. Her her iron was low, and she's sending me labels, like ingredients labels. And she's like, "Is this one good? Is this one good?" And they all had folic acid, synthetic versions, um, cyanocobalamin. Like I was just going down. I was like, "Listen, wow. you know, when you when you invest in something like a supplement for." your baby, which you're growing inside of, like that baby's gonna take what it needs from you. I'm more concerned about mama at this point because she's gonna lose her nutrients. So I referred her back to, you know, our women's complete, our methyl B12 folate, our chewable, um, you know, just a few other things, our frontier minerals, just, you know, stuff that women need, you know, when they're pregnant. And, you know, I told her, I was like our good omegas for the baby's brain. And I was explaining why. And she's like, I didn't know that. She's like, I just thought they were all the same. So that was a great lecture, and I think people, if if you want to go back and catch that, um, Jamie, you did that on. Let me go through the schedule. Was it Saturday? Uh, um, da, 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 da. I'm trying to look. So many great lectures, guys. But I'll tell you here in a second. Yeah, it was did Saturday. It. Yes. So if you check that out on March 6th, you just go back through that live stream, and you can go to the 10 a.m. lecture. It'll be about partially in because it's all one stream now, so and you can just bump through all the lectures, we, which we is offer nice. At no cost. If you want to bring your vitamins into the wellness center during the wellness week, we'll do a re quick review. Mm -hmm. When you're meeting with Dr. H or Jeff, bring your vitamins in. They'll do a review during their appointment with you. And this is a really important part because I usually see people bring in too many products. You know, I used the example of the woman last weekend, and she's a healthcare professional. 13 different products, Dr. H. So I immediately cut it down to about seven or eight, just in one visit for free. And I showed her, you got to use comprehensive formula like the woman's complete. She says, well, what's the difference? I says, this has the active vitamins, chelated minerals, probiotics, and superfoods all in one. I just combined six products that she was taking in the one formula. So better compliance and a better value. So these are trying the things that we're trying to um, educate people on. Right. Yeah, so recently somebody brought in their multivitamin and I actually compared it to the to the Nutritional Frontiers multivitamin. And uh, this person was, was shocked. And of course the B vitamins uh, were totally, totally lacking in the uh, uh, multivitamin that this particular person was doing and uh, then they became a, a believer and don't forget mm -hmm. all of these supplements are at 30 percent off right now right and that people can order them I, I know we talk about it all the time but for those who are maybe just tuning in uh they're th they're, this is an incredible deal 30 percent off the vitamins and, and minerals and our supplements and there's a variety of ways that they can be ordered right uh mm -hmm. you can um uh, order them, set up an appointment. We'll come to the door uh, of your car and uh, we'll deliver them to you with a smile uh, and a thank you. Uh, they can uh, uh, get them shipped for free for $75 or more. That's great. I remember when we did not do that. You know, uh, this is a, a, a great deal. You call, you get it shipped and you get it shipped for free for $75 or more. You can come in now and actually browse the store and talk to our health professionals. Okay. I saw um, uh, I saw Joe, the uh, godfather of nutrition out there, uh, <laughs> answering questions. Uh, so He the, answered the, them with a little bit of aggression. The godfather of nutrition, wow. I know, so uh, <laughs> it, one, you, you post something one time, right? So before we end, because we have a couple of minutes, and Dr. Honigman, I think it's really important that people come in and talk to the practitioners and really uh, just get a review on what they're taking. Uh, everyone's available. But for the rest of the schedule, there's three more uh, lectures that are coming up that are going to be fabulous. You know, first on the list, we have Erin Carey. She has a program called Sparking Wholeness. Um, it's a podcast. Incredible. She gets thousands and thousands of downloads. Um, and she actually overcame bipolar depression uh, with nutrition. So she literally healed herself. Oh, incredible. So, Bipolar depression. Yeah. So she's unbelievable. I awesome. Can't so, today. yeah. So she's going to be talking to us about anxiety and stress and how it, like we learned yesterday with Candace, that gut brain connection. That's what she's all about. Her entire, uh, you know, podcast is around that. 
So then coming up next is Robert Scott Bell. He's going to be talking about breaking the COVID illusions. You know, he has a really uh, big following and he has his own radio show called the Robert Scott Bell Show, uh, where he educates people for the last 20 plus years on alternative health. He's a homeopath, uh, natural health professional. So he's been in the industry for a long, long time. And then we have our very own Michelle Kunzelman. She's one of our practitioners and, and health partners with Nutritional Frontiers. Um, and she is going to be talking about life after the ventilator and ND's journey through COVID. She came down with COVID-19. She actually ended up in the hospital on a vent and then used a lot of our products from Nutritional Frontiers to overcome and regain her health. And she is doing better than ever ever and she'll tell you that herself. So she's gonna talk to us about that journey. What can we do? How can we prevent it? What are the things that brought her to sickness? And how did she come back stronger than ever, right? The comeback was greater than the setback. So that's a remarkable that story. That was the comeback. <laughs> that's right. She's so sweet. She sent me a very nice text this morning when I was working out. It was a beautiful song and prayer. So I just wanna thank her. That was very kind to her and came at a perfect time. Well, great. So we're excited for today. Thank you guys for being here this morning. I look forward to all of the lectures. And if you're tuning in with us, make sure you contact the Weiner Wellness Center. They are taking new patients. There are deep discounts on all your nutritional needs. You just simply have to call them at 412-922-WELL, or you can stop in and talk to one of our incredible doctors there and front desk staff who's doing such a great job. So thank you everybody at Weiner Wellness Center. Thank you, Jamie, and thank you, Dr. Honigman. Everybody yes, stay we'll tuned. One last minute and thank you, Dr. Tracy, because I think we take this lineup and this event for granted sometimes because we're so close to it. But this is a fantastic event. No one else puts on a seven day event like this with the caliber of speakers that we get, with the diverse backgrounds and the amount of education. It's just, I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm so proud of you and I'm so thankful. So thank you so much. It's an incredible job. Oh, absolutely. It's my pleasure. And you know, our heart, Jamie, uh, everybody here at the Weiner Center and at Nutritional Frontiers, it's education because that's the way people are going to take their health back is the more they know, the better choices they make. So absolutely, you're welcome. And thank you for letting me be part of it. All right, guys, yeah. stay tuned. Great stuff is coming up. That's it. So We're we will see you. So quick, I'm sorry. You can come back tomorrow. As we you know, tomorrow. it's a good opening morning commentary, <laughs> but it's quick and fast. Thanks, quick guys. Fast. Have a great day. God bless. All right. God bless. And, and as Trace, and as Jamie said, Tracy, and as the miracles say, I second that emotion. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in with us today. We are so excited to get started with Dr. Joseph Hottingman. He's coming up now. Oh, no, we're starting with Jeff Nisnik. I'm sorry, Jeff. We're starting with Jeff. Colon Health. We're going to talk about IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and natural solutions. So stay tuned. We're going to be back in about two minutes.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Weiner Wellness Virtual Summit. Our next speaker is coming up here. Jeff Nisnik from the Weiner Wellness Center is going to be joining us. And he is going to be talking about colon problems, IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and natural solutions. So I'm going to bring Jeff on now. Good morning, Jeff. How are you today? I'm doing great. Uh, how are you doing there, Tracy? I'm doing fabulous. Well, thank you for being here. I'm actually really excited to hear this. I know this is a big problem. So I'm going to let you just get into your lecture and take it away. All right. Thank you much. Pre appreciate the intro. So folks, yeah, my name is Jeffrey Nisnik and I'm going to be talking about colon problems today. Irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and we have some natural solutions that may help you. So a little bit about me. I went to Center High School local who you here in uh, Manac, Aliquip area. Went to Carnegie Mellon. I studied uh, civil engineering. I uh, went to work for engineering firms, but I had problems my whole life. You know, my, my body just wasn't working well. And that kind of forced me to get into the healing art field. And, you know, they say sometimes your greatest challenges turn out to be your greatest blessings. And this that's definitely true in my case. And for the past 29 years, I've been helping people, you know, help them, help them heal themselves. It's been my passion. OK, so I'm on the radio with the Health Breakthroughs radio show sponsored by the Wine and Wellness Center. I work here at the Wine and Wellness Center. Uh, that's on Monday mornings at 10 a.m. and Friday afternoons at 5 p.m. And then they repeat my show sometimes during the week. You can catch that on 620, 92.3 FM, 94.1, and 102.1. If you don't, uh, if you aren't in the area, and uh, you can stream this live on khbradio.com. And Holistic uh, Truth Radio Show, I'm also on that. That's Nutritional Frontiers Radio Show. It's usually one Thursday a month, usually at 8 in the morning. And once a month, I'm on KDKA, sometimes twice. Okay. You want to get a hold of me, uh, set an appointment with me, talk to me, call 412-922-9355. Okay, folks. So a little bit of FDA disclaimer, you know, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't treat, I don't cure or prevent any disease or conditions. These presentations and these statements today, these are for informational purposes only. They're not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. And should you have any medical condition, you know, you're advised to see a licensed, licensed healthcare practitioner. All right, I do applied kinesiology, holistic natural therapy. This integrates the art of oriental medicine and modern science and combines them together. And uh, this has been teaching this for quite a long time in the United States, the International College of Applied Kinesiology. We've been doing this for a while. The uh, basic premise of what I do, you know, during an appointment with me, I use this applied kinesiology. It's just a method of communicating with your body. You know, we all grew up from one cell you know where that cell grew us to the size that we are today it had the intelligence to do that and it still has that intelligence we're always replicating all of our cells all of our organs are all being replicated all those cells all, all new and there's a way we can communicate with all those cells and what, what we do is we find what's what's really strong in your body what reflexes are strong but you want to find out what reflexes are weak what's blocked you know where you have a disturbance in the force you know once we find what's weak, you find what strengthens those weak reflexes. And this may help you pinpoint you know, what your body's asking for nutritionally that may propel you in a direction of improving your overall health. So again, we don't treat cure prevent anything. You know, we aid and assist people in improving their nutritional status. We need nutrients for our body to function. And if we can improve that, maybe your body will function better. And through this energy testing, we're going to discover what's weak. Through the energy testing, you you discover what makes all those weak reflexes strong. And of course, we never make any claims. I'll never tell you that this will cure you. That never comes out of my mouth. I can show you what's weak. I can show you what makes it strong. And then it's up to you to decide to maybe change your lifestyle a little bit, stop eating the foods you test poorly on, and maybe start to nutrify your body a little better. A simple muscle testing procedure, you, you test for polarity. We really don't need to get into this, but I have a whole system that I follow to do this. Uh, on again so basically when you come to see me we're gonna find all these weaknesses we're gonna find what strengthens it you know show you what foods to stay away from come back four weeks later and let's retest this and see how you're doing Let's chart your progress you know two to four weeks come back we can check all these things and see how you're doing and many many people when they first see me on the first visit they'll fill on 50 different foods 60 different foods 70 different foods they have no idea there's so many things you just can't handle. 
and they come back four weeks later and they don't test poorly to hardly any of that stuff and it's just it shows you the resilience of your body it shows you probably before you just didn't have enough nutrients to make your body work and now all of a sudden it's working better and this plays into you know colon problems we're going to talk about that in a moment here i use body energy meridians you know we're going to scan your body with all these different reflexes there's lines of flow of energy through your body and we use this system i mean the chinese have been using this system for five thousand years this isn't something they just invented you know a couple weeks ago this is a long time you know proven uh system okay so if you've got colon problems if you've got abdominal pain fever constipation those are common colon problems but if you're colon bleeding you know these are uh, it's another colon problem uh, rapid bleeding is another problem but inflammatory bowel disease is just another name for crohn's disease ulcerative colitis irritable bowel syndrome they all share the same basic symptoms per se the leaky gut syndrome is where your large intestine can become porous even your small intestines can become porous and these toxins can leach out of your body into your body making your body even more toxic and the sigmoid colon now this is where your stool collects this is where all the waste of your body congregates and so the walls of your sigmoid colon is most exposed to toxins more than any other part of your body on a continual basis and if that becomes porous toxins are going to leach out of there and start to create problems too there's a picture of your sigmoid colon your large intestine goes up to one side across the middle down the other side it kind of s turns before it goes out all right now your intestinal health is dependent on a lot of different things you know your intestines are supposed to be protected by probiotics good beneficial bacteria are supposed to live in there and they do tons of different things for your body if you're deficient in these things you're going to start to have problems but also the, your intestinal health is dependent on you getting all the nutrients you need to regenerate tissues your body's always regenerating everything and it's dependent on you getting all the factors to make that as strong as possible but you, you also got to be able to digest your food you know proper digestion is critical and generally as people age your ability to extract nutrients from foods decreases and they may interfere with your body's ability to regenerate your own tissues and your food is you, your from your mouth to your anus is just a big long pipe and wouldn't it be great if you had irritable bowel syndrome wouldn't it be great if you've discovered what may be irritating that big long pipe you know foods do this to many many people but so do pathogens like bacteria virus fungus parasites and and harsh chemicals heavy metals all this stuff plays into this and generally when i see people i believe they have multiple causes of their problems you're not you know they're not going to find just one little supplement or one drug and all of a sudden you're cured chances are you got a whole lot of things going on you have poor digestion it's difficult for you to break down your food you have a lot of irritation to your body from not digesting food you have you know, an overgrowth of fungus or bacteria or parasites on top of that and then you have strained relationships or you're in uh, stressful environments and all that boils into you know how healthy are your is your body and your intestines so again all the waste of your body is gathered up by your lymphatic system your digestive system excretory system and they accumulate in that sigmoid colon and this is where people get a lot of irritation so in addition to that we're exposed to heavy metals and dangerous toxins if you have mercury fillings in your teeth chances are you getting mercury in your body and whenever uh your, these toxins get in your body it can damage the walls of your cells and in the walls of your cells is cholesterol so your liver is going to produce cholesterol to regenerate cells in all the walls of your cells you need cholesterol so your liver has to make it you know you get very little bit of the cholesterol from your diet actually boils goes into the uh, cholesterol makeup of your blood your, your liver is producing the amount it needs for your body to fix itself so again the part of your body most exposed to toxins is, is that sigmoid colon and this is where a lot of the problems originate okay now the organs in closest proximity to that sigmoid colon you know is a prostate and bladder in men you know and the uterus ovaries and bladder in women and if toxins leach are leaching out of there that can affect those organs 
So if you can see the sigmoid colon here, and the organs in closest proximity to that is the you know the bladder and so forth, uterus, ovaries, and so forth. And then guys, it's the prostate and bladder as well. So when toxins leach out of here, it can affect those organs. So <laughs> that's a funny picture. Colon problems, IBS, Crohn's, you know, ir ulcerative colitis. These don't have to be a life sentence. You know, for many people just because they haven't improved their nutritional status just because they haven't improved their their diet and they started taking drugs for a problem originated by you know all these things we talk about is one an anti-inflammatory drug going to fix that or a combination of anti-inflammatory drugs it's not going to fix your digestion it's not going to fix an overgrowth of fungus in your body there's a whole lot of things they're not going to take the mercury out of your teeth constantly going into your body so when you come to see me, we look into all these different avenues. We ask your body, what's off? What's wrong? You know, what can we do to help improve everything in your body? And lo and behold, see how your colon does. So now, how do you tell if your intestines are inflamed? Well, there's several ways. You know, symptoms of irritable bowel, you know, vary depending on the location and the severity of your inflammation. But it can be just diarrhea, which occurs when affected parts of your bowel can't reabsorb the water. Bleeding ulcers, you know, which may cause blood to show up in your stool, but just stomach pain, cramping, bloating, you know, this can be due to bowel obstruction as well. Now, colon cancer, that's a whole different animal. Now, you know, the early signs of colon cancer uh, can, can include, you know, a change in your bowel habits, including diarrhea or constipation, uh, a change in the consistency of your stool that lasts longer than four weeks, rectal bleeding or blood in your stool, and persistent abdominal discomfort, such as cramps, gas, or pain. Now, healthy suggestions. You, know, you want to identify what foods may be causing damage to your intestinal walls and eliminate them from your diet. You know, identify if you need some support in breaking your food down. Eating a non-acidifying diet. You, know, you want to eat a lot of uh, mineral-rich foods, a lot of vegetables, a lot of things that give you nutrients. You don't get many nutrients out of a bagel. You don't get many nutrients out of a cup of coffee. You don't get many nutrients out of a Pop-Tart. You follow me? You know, when you have just a piece of pizza at lunch and expect to be super healthy, it doesn't work that way. You need nutrients flowing in your body all the time. So you want to also identify if you need some immune support. You know, applied kinesiology can show you where you're weak. And say, for instance, you have 12 weak reflexes on your body and five supplements that help you deal with parasites strengthen everything chances are you got parasites we can ask your body what's going on and see what you respond to and i won't tell you that this parasite formula will heal you but if everything's weak and no other immune boosters strengthen these weaknesses but all the anti-parasite formula ones do to me chances are you got issues with parasites so let's do that here come spend some time with me let's ask your body to communicate with us and it'll tell us you know i I have a really strong attraction to all these immune boosters, but not those. So let's get into that. So in addition to that, uh, detoxification support. You know, we live in an amazingly toxic environment, and sometimes our cells don't have a very good capacity to purge all this stuff. And sometimes we need nutritional support for that. Just curing, like just, just improving your base, just improving your daily density of your nutrition may help improve the detoxification capacity of your cells so let's ask your body to see what it wants in that area and of course you need a whole bunch of nutrients flowing in your body to regenerate all your tissues this is basically what i do when people come to see me uh, there's a balance between acid and alkaline in about in a body if you eat a lot drink a lot of coffee eat a lot of meat don't eat many vegetables this whole balance can go off then your kidneys are going to struggle your kidneys are going to send signals to your parathyroid gland to steal calcium from your bones to put it into your bloodstream to make your blood alkaline all these things happen when you don't get enough nutrients in your body enough minerals in your body so you want to keep this balance you know in the right way typical pathway to intestinal health and healing and nutrition this can be the same pathway for anything basically you want to stop putting inflammatory agents in your body you want to put out the immune system fires. You know, if you've got a raging fungus in the intestines, you know, how do we know that? I can't tell you for sure. But if you fail on everything and 
five different antifungal remedies strengthen all your weak reflexes. To me, chances are you have an issue with fungus. And, you know, let's deal with that. Hey, test the teeth. Your teeth have are wired to your body electrically. And if you have uh, mercury fillings or root canal or um, an infected crown tooth on your lower molars over here or on this side or the, the third and fourth teeth from the back, if you take your, your uh, wisdom teeth out, um, if you have issues with those teeth, chances are you're blocking voltage to your lungs and your large intestine. And so many people who have irritable bowel also have issues in those teeth. Let's test your teeth and see if those teeth are adding to the problem. Uh, let's see. You got to bring bring in all 90 nutrients. You got to be, be able to digest them. It's one thing to put a whole bunch of vitamins and minerals in your body, and I see people all the time that have a tons of issues, and they take vitamins and they take minerals, but they're eating wheat all the time. They're eating oatmeal all the time. There's a very good chance that those are blocking your absorption of a lot of the minerals from your diet. So then you got to purge toxins. They used to teach you that your genes were your destiny, and they found that your genes are not your destiny. The covering to your cells your destiny. And what lands on the coverings to your cells, like poisons, toxins, benzene, cyclic hydrocarbons, a bunch of different poisons and so forth, they can distort the way your genes transcribe. You know, the same genes will transcribe a different way if healthy beneficial nutrients land on the covering to the cell. So what type of detoxifying agent does your body you know, communicate with us, you know, and says, I like this one and this one, but not those over, over there. Sometimes proline greens, sometimes uh, frontier cleanse, sometimes power cleanse, sometimes metallo clear. These are things that, you know, may help your body purge these things. So let's ask your body to tell us, I got a really strong attraction to this power cleanse, but not this metallo clear. Your body will tell us. Scars. Scars can limit energy flow in the body. And if you have a scar, you know, on your forearm, the different places that are on that large intestine meridian, maybe that's blocking energy flow or voltage to your large intestine. Let's test to see what essential oils strengthen those weak scars. Uh, and then you got to move. You got to move your body. Moving your body stresses your body. You know, uh, moving your body with intensity and so forth. This stress to your body your body will respond to the stress in a positive way if you don't overdo it of course so that also helps drain your lymphatic system and get everything moving and mobilized and the more sedentary you are the more trouble is going to be start brewing and then use the power of your mind your mind is amazing and it's you know help help the way you heal your body and then you got to believe of course I had all kinds of problems most of my life with, you know, back pain, neck pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, arthritis, all this stuff, you know, we have difficulty sleeping and so forth, all sorts of things. But I believe there was a reason why I wasn't functioning. And I was searching, searching, searching. And I believe I finally found the answers for me. And I use this knowledge base I gained along the way to help people when they come to see me, you know, personal experience, one of the best teachers. So my contact information, again, if you want to set an appointment with me, Call the Wine and Wellness Center here at 412-922-9355. Let me tell you some stories here. So, you know, kind of, what kind of success have I had with this? I've helped a lot of people with irritable bowel, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, uh, constipation. Tell you some stories. The, the best story, though, is, um, well, let's build, build up to the best story. So there's a, a wonderful woman. She was uh, 44 years old when I saw her. She had been in a car crash 20 years prior. Ever since that car crash, and this was a very bad car crash, ever since then, she had irritable bowel syndrome. And she came in to see me. I tested her. Her body said it had a very strong reaction to all these antifungal remedies. And she took the one her body said, she her body said tested the best on, took a probiotic that may help eat up fungus in the system, she took another probiotic that may help restore the health of the walls of the intestines. She took uh, multivitamin, multimineral, essential fatty acid. She avoided a whole bunch of foods. There was a whole bunch of foods she did tested poorly on. Four weeks later, she came back to me. She reported, you know what? Within a couple of weeks, I didn't have irritable bowel anymore. I didn't have I didn't have this chronic diarrhea problem anymore. It was gone, and it, had, it has it has remained gone. Another lady came to see me. She was 77. And uh, I did my testing thing with her, got on our nutrition plan. She was constipated. 
and she tested very well for GI complete amongst a bunch of other things uh, with vitamins, minerals, and so forth. I showed her what foods she had a problem with. She stayed away from those foods. I saw her four weeks later, and she tells me I'm a miracle worker. I'm like, I'm not a, a, a like a proud or boastful person. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, I'm not constipated anymore. I'm like, that is awesome. I said, uh, how long have you been constipated? She goes, well, I'm 77 now, and I've been constipated since I was 17. Like, what? It's 60 years she was constipated, and I've seen her several times since then. It's been uh, probably over nine months. Hasn't been constipated since. And uh, I could go on and on with stories, but the best one, of course, is a, a lovely 91-year-old woman that came to see me. Uh, unfortunately, she was in a wheelchair. She could barely walk. Even with the help of a walker, she could barely move. Uh, she couldn't see for the previous eight years uh, well enough to read. So even with a magnifying glass, she couldn't read for the previous eight years. Um, she had a hearing aid. She had uh, see-through skin where there's no color in her skin. Uh, she had dementia. And she, her ability to communicate was really limited. Uh, she would blurt out two or three word phrases. But she couldn't have a conversation with you. That didn't happen. And for 35 years, she had uh, Crohn's disease and chronic diarrhea. And she had a very limited diet because the, she lived with her daughter. And they knew certain foods she ate just literally ran right through her. And when I tested her, there were many foods that she was still eating that was supposedly on her good list that she tested poorly to. Of course, she eliminated those from her diet. She tested very well to uh, dairy and cream and things butter and she decided to eat you know more dairy cream and butter to get more cholesterol for her brain she had uh, tested very strongly for supplements that may help with fungus in the system and of course 91 essential nutrients um, changed her diet up from where she was four weeks no diarrhea anymore six weeks she had perfectly formed stools eight weeks she was uh, reading again with the help of a magnifying glass. At 10 weeks, um, she was walking again at home without her cane. And 17 weeks into the program, neutrifying the body, toxins out, staying away from toxic food, 17 weeks into it, she got her mind back. She had a three-hour conversation with her daughter and her son and now can communicate with everybody around her. She was walking into church, walking without a walker. Her, her church lady friends were like looking at her. Their color in her skin was totally back. She looked, you know, 15, 20 years younger. And her, her friends were like, Mary, what are, you, what are you doing? And she told them, you know, basically changed her diet and changed her lifestyle. So I can go on and on with stories like that for you. But that's just to stress the point of what the body can do. The body's always tearing down old cells and always building new cells. Quite often the old cells don't have enough nutrients to function well most people don't change their diet their nutritional status so they're building new cells that don't work so well and likewise organs don't work so well and fungus can overgrow or parasites can grow or virus and so forth you don't digest your food very well so we can improve your digestion if we can eliminate things that may be inflaming you or irritating your system maybe knock down some pathogens in your system you know like bacteria virus fungus parasites well, some people's bodies start to work better, function better. Symptoms seem to disappear. So, again, I don't treat any of this stuff. I'm just going to aid and assist you in improving your nutritional status. Your body's going to communicate with us. You know, it'll say, I, I, I'm weak here, weak here, weak here. And this one over here strengthens it and those don't. For up to me, I would take the stuff that strengthens it. So, that's basically my presentation, folks. That's my spiel on, on problems. Come to see me. Call the Wine and Wellness Center here, and we'll do what we can to get you on a track to improving your nutritional status, keeping you away from the toxic stuff, maybe detoxifying other things. Test your teeth and show if you have problems with the teeth. Go to the right dentist to help make you fix that and get you on a track to do better. So that's it for today, folks. Uh, Tracy, do we have any questions or comments on anything? No, that was fabulous. Thank you so much, Jeff, for your presentation. And thank you, everybody, for joining us for Jeff's presentation. As he said, you are welcome to call the Weiner Wellness Center, get in touch with him, make an appointment. He does remote and in-person appointments. Uh, and also, if you have any questions on any of the information that he has shared today. So thanks so much, Jeff. Guys, stay tuned because at 10 a.m., we have Dr. Joseph Honigman coming up. 
Uh, he will be here shortly, and we will be right back. All right. Thanks, everybody. Ciao. Have a great day. All right, guys, stay tuned. We're going to show a little bit of an educational video that we did a while ago. So if you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to put them in the chat box or you can call the Weiner Center. Our next speaker is coming up, Dr. Joseph Honigman. It's always a good time to clean and detox. So we heard all about all of those toxins this morning. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
many of us out there have issues with bone health and have issues with sleep? Probably a lot of us. In fact, in 80% of women, they show that this is a key deficiency, calcium and magnesium, both being deficient in those. Not to mention some of us are genetically predisposed to things like osteoporosis, osteopenia. These could, uh, if we have these, these could li lead to hip fractures and, and fractures of bone that we don't need. In terms of sleep, a lot of us lack sleep. It's, it's a huge issue across our country. So why not have a solution for both those areas in one product? We do. We have CalMag Plus, it's a nutritional frontiers product. It's formulated in a powder. We have calcium and magnesium in a two to one ratio. So you get 600 milligrams of calcium and 300 milligrams of magnesium per scoop. Really easy to take. You put it in your, uh, you mix it with your water, put it in your shaker bottle, your blender. Uh, it's really cost efficient, cost effective. It's about a buck, a dollar a day, 90 cent per day to be exact. And you get something that's going to help you promote sleep and promote healthy bones. How about it? CalMag Plus Nutritional Frontiers product for your bone support and your sleep support. One of our products for Candida infections is Candy Kill 2. Candy Kill 2 is really great in supporting Candida infections, yeast infections in men and women, any conditions that affect the skin or the nails like psoriasis, and also any conditions that affect the digestive tract. Candida is a good thing, but when it is overgrown in the gut, it becomes a problem. We have the formulation Candy Kill 2, which is compromised with many ingredients like berberine and caprylic acid, and many herbs and oils like olive, oregano, garlic, pumpkin, grapefruit, and thyme. This formulation should be taken four capsules all at once, either in the morning or in the evening, just away from your probiotics. And this can all be done for about $1.50 a day. Candy Kill 2 is a great formulation for anyone with the overgrowth of bad bacteria in the gut.
right, let's talk about heart health briefly. And of course, we all know the importance of heart health. You know, our heart is, is doing so much on a daily basis. And as we age, you know, we fall into certain risk categories based on where our lipids are at and based on how well our triglycerides and cholesterol are doing. So you have all these key components that play a role in cardiovascular health that you're, I'm sure your doctor is checking for on an annual basis. Hopefully, we all need to be getting annuals and checking these levels. But why not have a supplement that can help manage cardiovascular system, cardiovascular health, and help get some of these markers where they need to be? So we have CardioStack that really plays a key role in cardiovascular health. And I'll briefly lay out the three different ingredients that CardioStack has in it. We have L-carnitine, we have dimethylglycine, and we have cocaine. Each of these ingredients play a key role in heart health. Dimethylglycine actually helps with ATP production. ATP is an acronym indicating energy production. Okay, so it helps with energy production specifically for the heart though. CoQ10 is a vital antioxidant that we need to manage heart health. That also helps with energy production, mitochondrial function within the cardiovascular system. Okay, and then we also have L-carnitine. L-carnitine takes fatty acids and converts them over to ATP production. So converts that over to energy production. Okay, these are all tied to the cardiovascular system. The CoQ10, the L-carnitine, and the dimethylglycine. Okay, if you take maintenance, which is four per day, you get 100 milligrams of CoQ10, you get 1,800 milligrams of L-carnitine, and you get 300 milligrams of dimethylglycine, which are all at very therapeutic levels. It's about $1.60 per day, taken four per day. It's a 30-day supply that you have in one bottle, but this is going to really play a key role in maintaining and helping you manage great cardiovascular health. Cardio Stack, make sure you get it. Nutritional Frontiers, one of the best products for cardiovascular health.
let's talk about a simple, easy, and effective way to build your immune system to help fight off those colds and flus everyone's always dealing with. The great thing is you don't need to swallow a capsule or a tablet. All you need to do is be able to chew on a cherry-flavored chewable vitamin C called Cherry Chews by Nutritional Frontiers. Great for kids, adults, or seniors. They provide 500 milligrams of chewable vitamin C in one tablet. All you need to do is take one or more chewables every day. Very inexpensive, costs about 50 cents a day. And what a great tasting way to build your immune system. Great for kids, adults, or seniors. Cherry Chews by Nutritional Frontiers. discuss a fantastic all-natural cholesterol formula and when we're referring to cholesterol we're talking about the oxidized cholesterol of course we know your body needs cholesterol your brain your sex hormones especially but we're referring to the bad cholesterol the oxidized cholesterol that's what causes the hardening and plaquing of the arterial walls
Okay, welcome everybody. We are back and you are in for a treat today. Dr. Joseph Honigman from the Weiner Wellness Center is going to be presenting for us today on always a good time to detox. So this is gonna be an incredible lecture because he can bring the science and back it all. So welcome Dr. Honigman. Thank you for being here with us today. Good morning, Dr. Honigman. Can you hear me? Okay, we will get him in a second. We might, must be having some technical difficulties. So let me ask my staff to go up there. Okay, we have uh, our technical group in the room and they are helping out. Hopefully they can hear me better now. Hi guys, can you hear me okay now? Not yet. You can't hear me or you can? Uh, I can. <laughs> huh? Volume? Volume's up. Okay. Do we just need to share the screen? Can you? Can you? We could. Can you? I can hear you. I can't hear you. Are you muted? Well, Dr. Honigman, people don't really need to hear me. <laughs> mm. Do you want to get in here? Tracy. So, hello everyone. Welcome to my presentation on It's a Good Time to Detox. What you're looking at on the right of your screen is a representation of phthalate. This is a common environmental toxin found in our cosmetics, and I will be talking about that later in the presentation. But first, a little introduction. I am Dr. Joseph Honigman, and I'm a functional wellness nutritionist and a lifestyle-oriented doctor. I have approximately 40 years experience in natural health care, and I use safe, natural, effective methods, focus on optimizing the health of your whole body. I have specialized training in functional wellness and nutrition, integrative medicine, and stress management techniques, including um, diaphragmatic breathing, meditation, and other relaxation techniques. I also hold a Master of Public Health degree with a major in epidemiology. And my goal for you, as well as for me, is always healthy transformation of body, mind, and spirit. Now let's get to the presentation. Well, first of all, what is detoxification? Well, detoxification is how your body gets rid of waste and toxins. And a toxin for our purposes will be any substances that can cause 
injury. And it's going to be stored throughout your body, in your fat, your bones, your tissues, and cells, and even in your brain. This can result or contribute to an assortment of symptoms and diseases. So simply put, your health depends on how well your detoxification system, including your liver and kidneys, function. However, consider that on a daily basis, you may be exposed to an overabundance of toxins. An overload so intense that you've never experienced before. And this can overwhelm even a well-functioning detoxification and elimination system. So how does that occur? Well, consider that they are indeed everywhere and they're abundant. For example, there are environmental toxins and there are air pollutants. There's heavy metals and organic solvents that enter through your lungs, your digestive tract and your skin. And there are more, and we will go over them in a little bit more detail later. Dr. Ha Mark Hyman, who is a functional medicine doctor, points out that there are 80,000 toxic chemicals that have been introduced into our environment since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. And very few of these have been tested for their long-term effect on human health, and those that have the results have been very concerning. 80,000, probably more. So for example, let's take dioxins. Dioxins are very prevalent, they're very common, and they are persistent environmental pollutants found throughout the world. So what does that mean? It means that they don't break down. And so the chances of them accumulating are greater. Today, more than 90% exposure is through the food, mostly from animal products, including meat and dairy products, fish and shellfish. And these are contaminated by the dioxin. Dioxins are absorbed and stored in fat tissue and therefore accumulate in the food chain and therefore they accumulate in you. So once they get stored in the fat, it's hard to get rid of them. And toxins are highly toxic. To dioxins are highly toxic. They can cause reproductive problems, damage your immune system, and interfere with hormones, and even cause cancer. And let's not forget about the heavy metals. Heavy metals such as lead and aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury are found in the water and the air that you breathe. Lead can get into your body by contaminated water or food. It could also come from breathing fumes or dust that contain lead particles. And cadmium comes from industrial dumping, cigarette smoking, contaminated food. And it's important to note that even in very small quantities, mercury, lead, and cadmium are very toxic. So I just want to diverse a little bit, and we're going to talk about the mercury uh, that you may be consuming in the fish that you eat, especially tuna and swordfish. And they accumulate in these fish because they are predatory animals. So they eat fish that contain a little bit of mercury, get stored in their tissues. And then the more they eat, the higher the levels of the toxins of, the, of mercury. And then we eat the fish. So we do know that there are some types of tuna that have less toxins than others, such as skipjack, skip that's S-K-I-P, J-A-C-K, and Tongle, T-O-N-G-O-L, tuna. However, what I do is, unfortunately, I don't have it with me, but I actually eat a type of tuna called Safe Catch. That's the name brand, Safe Catch. And this brand of tuna actually measures every tuna that they catch and it has to have very low mercury levels for them to use it and pack it. Um, I believe it's actually endorsed by the American Pregnancy Association. So if you are going to eat tuna, I'm recommending that you go for the smaller swordfish like skipjack and, and tongle and look into the Safe Catch brand. They should pay me something for this endorsement, but they're not. And let's not forget 
about the daily toxic air pollution that we're exposed to. Unfortunately, once again, the American Lung Association in 2020, so that's, um, that's just this past year, obviously we don't have the data for 2021, but in 2020, they reported Pittsburgh as one of the worst United worst cities in the United States for particle pollution. In fact, Pittsburgh ranks eighth in the country for particle pollution. And this significantly increases your risk for asthma and heart disease and cancer, as well as premature death. So Pittsburgh is the only community, and that's the city that I live in, and I'm sure many of you who are watching this right now live in Pittsburgh and the surrounding area. Pittsburgh was the only community in the list of the 25 most polluted cities east of the Mississippi. So that means Pittsburgh is actually more polluted than Chicago or Philadelphia. And Chicago has approximately seven to eight times the population of Pittsburgh and Philadelphia approximately five times the population. Now, as I've said often when I'm on the radio and I talk to people, I love Pittsburgh. It's a wonderful place to live and to raise your children. My friends who come here, they love it. They can't stop talking about it. They can't, they, they, they're surprised actually at how wonderful and amazing the city is. However, we certainly could do better when it comes to air pollution. Allegheny County received an F grade for the number of days with high levels of ozone. So we got an F grade for particulate matter and we're now getting an F grade for ozone. And that can damage your lungs, cause chest pain, coughing, shortness of breath and throat irritation. Finally, Allegheny County has ranked number three in the country for pollution related cancer rates, resulting in at least twice the risk of cancer from air pollution. So I'm, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. You know, there are things that you can do to minimize this. You know, first of all, you can get a HIPAA filter for your home. Uh, you're, you're not going to be able to eliminate it totally, but you can try to minimize it. For example, we know that plants and trees help to neutralize air pollution. Something that I try to do whenever I can is actually go to my beloved Frick Park, which is this wonderful wilderness, uh, a wilderness park between uh, Regent Square and Squirrel Hill. I'll go there, try to get into the middle of the forest and just deep breathe. I'll do diaphragmatic breathing. It's wonderful. And I recommend that you try something like this as well, if you can. Oh, by the way, that's actually called forest bathing. I did not make that up. It actually originated in Japan and it's called Shinrin Yoku, which means going into the forest and just trying to be mindful of what's around you. So here is some good news. Pittsburgh did have fewer unhealthy air days on average than the past year. That's good. So this past year, 2020, was indeed better than 2019. It's a start. And there are toxic contaminants in your drinking water, chemical and biological contaminants that include leach and fungicides such as atrazine and pesticides and metals. Well, what about that? Are fungicides in our water really a problem? Well, they are. Let's get back to atrazine. Atrazine is a very common fungicide in the United States, although it is banned in the European uh, Union. I believe it's been banned for over 10 years. So, what can atrazine do? It can interfere with your endocrine system, like your thyroid glands and your reproductive organs and your adrenal glands. In fact, it's been shown to turn a male frog into a female frog that can produce viable eggs. I think I'd like to skip that. So what can you do about that? For example, you can use a carbon filter, something as simple as a carbon filter can get rid of the atrazine in the water that you drink. There are 
also prescription drugs and over-the-counter drugs found in your drinking water. As a result of an Associated Press investigation in 2008, officials in Philadelphia said testing discovered 56 different pharmaceuticals or byproducts in treated drinking water. And then there are indeed toxins found in your personal care products, as well as toxins actually formed within you. So toxins in the personal care products include phthalates, and uh, phthalates can damage your liver, your kidneys, your lungs, and your uh, reproductive system. We had a chemical representation of that at the beginning of this uh, slideshow of this PowerPoint. And so what's it used for? Well, it's actually used to lubricate and soften ingredients. There's also something called triclosan that you can find in your personal care products. And this is also an endocrine disruptor, which means that it can do damage to your thyroid and your, and, uh, your adrenal gland. So what you want to do is read labels. Look for products that don't contain them. So for example, let's look at this. This is actually a product um, it's actually a product that I use. It is a deodorant. We sell this here. By the way, uh, at the Weiner Wellness Center right now, all of our cosmetics are on sale for 20% off. So that's a really good deal. And the phone number is 412-922-9355. I diversed a little bit, but let's get back to the toxins in your personal care products. And when I read this, it, it, it's going to say... No phthalates, no aluminum, no triclosan, 100% vegan, quality free, and it's in a BPA free container. Uh, one more uh, just to show you that you should read labels. Uh, this is uh, a shampoo, and right on the front, it's going to say no GMOs, vegan, biodegradable. And it's also going to say no parabens, no sulfates, no synthetic colors or fragrances, no phthalates. There are also toxins that are being formed within you, in your gut. And they're going to be released by harmful bacteria, yeast, and parasites. Because they're not trying to live in harmony with you. They're just trying to reproduce. And so they will release toxins that will damage your gut and your gut lining. And finally, but certainly not least, are the toxins found in the standard American diet. The standard American diet is filled with chemicals and additives such as preservatives and hydrogenated oils and artificial colors and flavors, as well as pesticides, fungicides, antibiotics, and hormones used in meat and dairy products. So is this a problem? Am I exaggerating? Well, let's take a look at this. You know, for every American, every year, there are three pounds of pesticides sprayed onto our farms. That's three pounds for every human in the United States. And it's been shown that these pesticides and herbicides will transfer directly through breast milk. And there are three over 200 peer reviewed studies that correlate the, sp the spraying of these toxic chemicals to effects like ADD in children, pediatric cancers, and birth defects. So it is indeed a problem. Can it affect adults? Sure it can. Stuart B. Levy, MD, was a professor of molecular biology, microbiology, as well as medicine at Tufts School of Medicine. He studied the subject of antibiotic resistance for years, and he estimated that there are 15 to 17 million pounds of antibiotics used subtherapeutically in the United States each year. Subtherapeutically. That means that they're not being used to prevent disease. 
they're not being used to cure an animal of uh, a uh, <clears throat> of a bacterial infection. So what are they being used for? These 15 to 17 million pounds of antibiotics, they're actually being used for the majority of animals as a growth hormone to fatten them up so that they can get to slaughter with a heavier weight. Do you think that this may be interfering with our own ability to fight bacteria? Might there be some uh, antibiotic resistance as a result of this? I certainly think so. Also, besides in the food that we eat, consider that there are herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, and fertilizers also being used in our gardens. So what's the solution? Grow organic, eat organic as much as you can. So exactly what does organic mean? Well, if it's going to be categorized as organic, it must be meet these categories. If it look to your left at the top of the screen and you'll see a symbol, USDA organic. What's that telling you? What that is telling you is that 95% or more of the ingredients will be organic, which means that you can have a non-organic ingredients up to a total of 5%. All listed organic ingredients must actually be certified ingredients and they must be identified by an asterisk or some other symbol. In, in, in this particular product, it has a little one uh, with a parentheses, uh, but I often see it with an asterisk. If it says 100% category, 100% uh, organic category, you've hit the jackpot because it's going to meet all of these criteria. All of the ingredients must be certified and they must be identified as organic. And yes, there's going to be some residue. There will be. I mean, you, you, it can't be helped. From neighboring fields, uh, some of that may drift onto the, onto the organic, but it's going to be much much, much less. And remember, our goal is to minimize the exposure. We're never going to eliminate it. So what's this result of this accumulated toxic exposure to all of those toxins that come from everywhere, from the air that we breathe, the chemicals on our skin, the food, water that we eat, drink? Well, Although you already have an amazing system inside you to neutralize and get rid of the toxins, recently this toxic load is greater and unlike anything that you have ever been exposed to in the past. It can overload the body's detoxification, elimination, and immune systems. And this can result in a chronic inflammatory state that can make you sick and worsen an existing illness. These excess toxins are stored in every cell of your body. And so it's in your best interest and health to eliminate them, just get rid of them. And these are just some of the symptoms. I didn't even, I didn't include all of them, but these are some of the symptoms that could result from a toxic overload. And again, it's going to depend on the toxins that you're being exposed to. But these symptoms include allergies, sinus congestion, skin breakouts, and rashes, including eczema and acne, headaches, fatigue, weakness, brain fog, loss of concentration, shortness of breath, muscle aches and pains, depression and mood disorders, hair loss, tingling in the fingers and in the hands, weight gains and bloating and puffiness. And this toxic overload can also result in chronic conditions and diseases such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, heart disease, liver disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, cancers, autoimmune diseases such as multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis, 
thyroid disease, such as Hashimoto's and Graves, which are autoimmune disorders of the thyroid, as well as autoimmune disorders of the gut, including Crohn's disease and colitis. So how do we get rid of them? Well, we have to thank our major organs of detoxification. And they include your liver, your digestive system, your kidneys, your skin, and your lungs. And let's not forget the lymphatic system. Okay, I did. I didn't put it down on the slide. The lymphatic system, I call it the Rodney Danger Field you know, of your organs of detoxification, as well as uh, immunity, your immune system, and elimination. So I'm going to give it some credit, right along with your liver, your digestive system, your kidneys, skin, and lungs. Let's include the lymphatic system. But we're going to spend most of our time on the liver because the liver is your king of detoxification. The king. And that's no disrespect to your kidneys and the other organs because your kidneys work very, very hard. In fact, they are filtering about 200 quarts of blood every day, 200 quarts every day. So we're, we're, there's no disrespect to your kidneys, but we're gonna concentrate on the liver. Now in your mind's eye, picture this. All the blood vessels from your entire digestive tract, entire digestive tract including your stomach, your small intestine, and your large intestine, go straight to your liver. And the liver is going to process all the food, including the toxins and nutrients that have been absorbed into your bloodstream. It's going to help to remove toxins from the air, chemicals that you breathe, that have also been absorbed into your body. The liver plays a major role, the major role, in removing drugs, heavy metals, and environmental toxins. It will detoxify alcohol and other poisonous chemicals. And it does so by filtering and cleaning two liters of blood per minute. That's over two quarts of blood per minute. So how does the liver do this? Well, many of the toxins that we're exposed to are fat-soluble compounds, meaning that they get stored in your fat cells and reach toxic levels. And now they're going to be hard to get rid of because our blood is mostly made up of water. Our urine is mostly made up of water. So the ultimate goal of detoxification in the liver is to transform these fat-soluble compounds into water-soluble compounds, which are more easily easily eliminated from your body in water-soluble compounds, such as your bile, your sweat, and your urine. Consider that blood is 92% water, and water makes up 91 to 96% of your urine, even your feces are nine or 75% water. Now to accomplish this transformation, to neutralize the toxins and make them more water soluble, the liver uses two major phases of detoxification called phase one and phase two. Now it does get a little complicated. In fact, it could get very complicated. And you don't need to know a lick about this to be able to detoxify your body and get rid of stored toxins. But I'm going to try to explain it as simply as I can. And hopefully you will have an understanding when I finish. So we're going to talk about phase one of liver detoxification, which is called the neutralization phase. In phase one, the cytochrome P450 enzymes in your liver converts these fat-soluble toxins into less harmful ones. Okay, so right away, you know, P450 enzymes, really, first of all, 450 does not stand for the number of enzymes. It does not. 
it has to do with their spectrum on this, uh, uh, that a wavelength uh, on a spectrometer. And you don't need to remember that at all. All you need to know is that during phase one, you have these special enzymes that are in your liver that are could convert the fat soluble toxins into less harmful ones and into intermediate, which means that they're not yet ready to be eliminated, but into intermediate, more water soluble mo molecules. The other important part about phase one that you need to understand is that during the process, toxins and free radicals are generated. That's not uncommon in uh, the metabolism of our body. As we change things, other things are being formed and some of them are actually toxic. That's why we have so many existing antioxidants in our body to neutralize them. But <clears throat> it's the role of phase two liver detoxification to make sure those toxins do not build up and to go through the final phase of making them more water soluble. So in summary, phase two provides the final neutralization of the toxins so that they can be removed by the body. At stage one, you wanna consume antioxidants, either through the food you eat or through supplements. I highly recommend doing both. So antioxidants such as glutathione, I'm mentioning glutathione because this is a major, major liver detoxifier. In fact, it's a lot of times called the master antioxidant because it's found in every cell of your body or almost every cell of your body. And also vitamin C, which once more, this is a master antioxidant. And both are very important to neutralize the free radicals that are being created by the byproducts generated during phase one. Now we get to phase two. I call this the conjugation phase. I imagine many other people do as well. In phase two, detoxification occurs primarily through conjugation of toxins because now we're going to uh, utilize compounds um, <clears throat> from other molecules and uh, uh, supplements and food that we eat to bind to the intermediate to make it even less toxic and more water soluble. So some of these are going to be, uh, get what's more, uh, glutathione and, and amino acids to create sufficiently water soluble compounds that can now be excreted in the bile or kidneys when you urinate. This occurs through many different pathways. I'm just giving you two. There's probably, I think, seven or eight. It occurs through many different pathways, including botan, but not limited to glutathione conjugation and amino acid conjugation. And the food you eat and the supplements you take can enhance and improve these pathways. And I also want to give you an example of how powerful glutathione is. So the number two cause of drug-related hospitalization is Tylenol poisoning, acetaminophen. Number two. Okay, so a lot of people don't know that they're taking an excess of acetaminophen because it could be their headache medication. It could be for joint pain. It could be for fever. And so they un unknowingly overdose, wind up in the hospital. Guess what they're given? They're given large doses of n acetylcysteine which converts to glutathione, which then neutralizes the acetaminophen toxins. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about the elimination phase. So this is part of your detoxification phase, just not your liver detoxification phase. So what we want is we want the excretion of the toxins that are formed from phase one and phase two and now ready to be eliminated. We want them to be eliminated in our feces and our urine. So some of the toxins are going to be shunted into the bloodstream and others are going to be removed by the kidneys in your urine. Others are going to move to the bile, right? Liver makes the bile. Bile uh, helps to emulsify fat, but it also binds to toxins. It plays a very important role in binding to toxins. And then it's going to make a way, it's make its way into your 
intestines, and that's going to be bound by dietary fiber. So now we have the combination of the bile, the toxins, and the fiber, and guess where that's going? It's going to be eliminated as feces. In fact, most of your feces is going to be this fiber bound fiber with bound toxins in it. It's also going to have bacteria and water. So the majority of your feces is going to be fiber, bacteria, and water. And that's a good thing because if it's not eliminated in your feces, guess what? It's going to back up and wind up being wind up in your cells. So not not good if you've got constipation. And finally, as you probably have figured out by now, your health depends on how well your detoxification and elimination systems function. But remember, even with a well functioning detoxification and elimination system, you can be overwhelmed by the sheer number and diversity of toxins you are being exposed to. So how can you help? What can you do about it? Well, first of all, you need to reduce your exposure to toxins, right? It's really a one-two punch. We need to reduce our exposure as much as possible. We know it's impossible to reduce all our exposure. So we're going to do our best. And then we're going to get rid of the existing toxins as best we can. So some simple tips. Wash new clothes to help remove toxic chemicals. Invest in some organic clothing. Use natural cosmetics and skin and skincare products. Read the labels. Use microwave safe containers. Don't use plastic. I wouldn't use them even if they said microwave safe. Right? Only uh, if you're going to microwave, use glass. Make sure your water is, is free from toxins as much as possible. So at the very least, have a carbon filter. You know, uh, maybe on the counter type of uh, uh picture that filters out water toxins avoid pesticides fungicides herbicides and chemical fertilizers i think most of us can do a better job with this so eat organic food when possible don't try not to spray them on your lawns and gardens in fact i don't see a reason to so i want to divert just a little bit and I want to direct you to a website called the Environmental Working Group. It's on the bottom of the slide, EWG, the Environmental Working Group. What they do, amongst many other wonderful things to protect you against the toxins that you are being exposed to, is they come out with a list of the 12 worst foods in terms of pesticides. And this was the 2020 list. Right, strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, and potatoes. Personally, I feel that all of the soft fruit, all of the soft vegetables have to indeed be uh, organic because the pesticides are going to get into the fruit and get into the vegetables, and you're not going to be able to wash them away. The 2020 Clean 15 list. All right. I want to make something clear. These indeed have less pesticides, but they could also be a GMO crop. Just because they have less pesticides doesn't mean that they're not genetically modified. So I would absolutely want to know if I'm eating these foods that they are a GMO free crop. So this list, for example, includes sweet corn. Well, if it doesn't tell you that it's GMO free, it is GMO free, or there's a very high percentage it is. Uh, beets are like that, by the way. You wouldn't think so, but they are. Beets are a highly uh, GMO-induced uh, uh, GMO 
crop. Well, by the way, I want to go back to tell you a quick story. Uh, when I was younger, so much younger than I am today, I actually spent a summer picking strawberries. No, it wasn't strawberries. I take that back. It was cherries in a place called Penticton, Canada, which is as far west as, as you can go uh, in British Columbia. And while I was, I thought that I was going to go, this is going to be beautiful. This is Canada. I'm going to breathe fresh air. And I'm going to enjoy the forest, you know, and then I'll pick some uh, cherries, you know, on the side. Now, I went there because my, my girlfriend had uh, dual citizenship. She was a Canadian uh, and a uh, citizen of the United States. So we were there and I'm picking strawberries. And the next thing I know is the planes are overhead and they are spraying toxic chemicals, including these horrible fungicides onto the trees. And I had to run to duck for cover, not to get my, my lungs filled uh, with these toxic chemicals. So how do you get rid of them? All right. So besides avoiding them as much as possible, I'm going to recommend that you try a 14 to 28 day detox. You're going to eat food and you're going to take supplements that's going to enhance and improve your detoxification pathways. That's going to help uh, improve both your phase one and your phase two of detoxification, of liver detoxification, as well as your elimination of them. So to begin with, remember, this is a detoxification program. So all food during this time should be organic. Absolutely no gluten, dairy, processed food, added sugar, artificial sweeteners, or items with names that you have no clue as to what they stand for. So why gluten and dairy? Because you know, these uh, two types of food uh, pretty much top the list for food sensitivities and food allergies. So Maybe you don't think you have one or, or uh, you know, maybe a, a, a test in the past came back and said you didn't. My recommendation is for the detox, just don't eat them. Afterwards, you can reintroduce. If you choose to eat animal products, you don't have to. All land animals such as chickens should be organic, pasture raised, fed and not free range. Well, why not? Free range. I mean, after all, doesn't is that great? Well, free range chickens are allotted less than two square feet per hen and seldom see the light of day. And many eat a corn or soy based feed. Compare that to pasture raised where the girls get at least 108 square feet each and consume some feed, but lots of grass, bugs, worms, and anything else that they can find in the dirt. They tend to be laid out of their barns early, and then they're returned later, because we don't want them to be uh, dinner for, for an owl or fox, even a, a hawk that's uh, feeding late. Does it make a difference in terms of the egg quality? Pasture-raised hens produce healthier eggs. According to a 2003 study out of Penn State University, researchers found that one pasture-raised egg contains twice as much omega-3 fat, three times more vitamin D, four times more vitamin E, and seven times more beta-carotene than eggs from hens raised on traditional feed. And also a note on fish. Fish should be clean water caught, right? If you eat trout, you want it from a clean stream or lake. You don't want it from a stocked lake, which is going to have all kinds of toxins in it that is going to accumulate in the fish. And these are some of the absolute best foods for detoxification. They include the cruciferous family, which also double as some of the best foods for cancer to prevent cancer and to, um, to actually help uh, reverse cancer if possible. 
And these include broccoli, collards, kale, arugula, all members of the cruciferous family, as well as garlic and onions, which are sulfur rich and great to enhance the conjugation pathways. So what if you have a thyroid problem? People say, oh, I love these vegetables, but I got a thyroid problem and they're going to trophic. Well, they're only going to trophic if they're not cooked and you don't have to cook them a lot. If you cook them lightly, that will destroy the gototrophic part of the cruciferous family. And what's more, these vegetables are great for cancer. They're great for detoxification. And they're also great for your heart because these are also nitric oxide producers, which help heal the endothelium, the underlining of the uh, arteries that go to your heart and also everywhere else to your, bo your body. Lots of dark leafy greens are good for detoxification. So I recommend them. Asparagus, which is a dietary source of glutathione, a major detoxifier, sometimes called the master antioxidant. Lemons, limes, tangerines are sources of limonene, which stimulates both phase one and phase two detoxification pathways. So water, with lemon in it is absolutely a good thing to do. Beets contain betalanes, and this is a pigment that gives them their deep red color, and it promotes repair and gener regeneration, especially in the liver. So beets are great for your liver. They're great for your gallbladder, but I absolutely recommend that you get them organic because they are, they are a GMO crop. Fiber for, deto for detoxification. You can write a book about the benefits of fiber, and I am sure authors have. But for detoxification, fiber will decrease your initial absorption of them. They bind to toxins. Remember that they will bind to the bile that has bound to toxins, and they will be eliminated through your feces. And simultaneously, they're going to improve your bowel movement giving it bulk. They support the good bugs in your gut. I mean, fiber is the their favorite food. The good bacteria in your body, they just love fiber. And so sources of insoluble fiber and both are whole grains, mostly, like I don't know, brown rice, um, uh, quinoa, which is really is technically not a grain, but it's a good source of insoluble fiber and soluble fiber, such as that found in oats, lentils, apples, oranges, pears, strawberries, nuts, flaxseed, beans, dried beans, blueberries, cucumbers, and carrots. All of them are good sources of soluble fiber. And I recommend that you go and uh, consume about 25 to 40 grams per day. But if you've never done this before, Start small, because if you don't and you are not used to breaking down fiber, if you don't have the enzymes and the good bacteria to do it, you're going to wind up with bloating, and probably some uh, gut discomfort as well. So start small and build your way up if, you are, if you've been traditionally low in uh, consuming fiber. Oh, by the way, uh, if you don't drink water with this, you're going to wind up constipated. So it's just another reason to make sure that you're drinking water and lots of it. And now let's get into the supplements. Uh, I'm only going to be recommending three. If you want more information on the supplements, I actually recommend that you watch Mike Gallagher's talk, which was this past Saturday. He really goes into the supplements in details and will go over each ingredient within them. I'm going to give you a general overview. These are the ones that I use uh, basically with just about every patient that I see that I put on a detoxification cleanse. The first is power cleanse. So this is an absolute must. It's a unique formulation that contains ingredients to enhance both phase one and phase two of liver detoxification. It's hypoallergenic. That's wonderful, which means it can be taken by those with food allergies or sensitivities. And it also features a blend of pea, rice, and pumpkin as its protein sources, providing amino acids required for both 
vegetarians, vegans, and non-vegetarians. Included are the amino acids, N-acetylcysteine. Do you remember how I told you that N-acetylcysteine converts to glutathione and it actually can reverse Tylenol poisoning? That's how good it is. L-cysteine, glutamine. Glutamine is a wonderful product. It is the uh, major source of uh, uh, food for your uh, small intestine bacteria, for your small intestine and pterocytes. So those are the, your gut cells that actually uh, protect you against something called leaky gut. It's a whole other talk. Threonine, threonine, glycine, lysine, taurine, all of them are going to help in the detoxification pathway. The amino acid conjugation pathway is very important. So power cleanse, once more, I consider it to be the foundation. Besides what I just talked about, it also features milk thistle. And many of you have heard of milk thistle. It's an herb that's been used traditionally for liver health, gallbladder health, and supports phase one detoxification. It prevents depletion of glutathione in the liver. It also has anti-inflammatory properties and it promotes protein synthesis to replace damaged liver cells. It also features a vitamin and mineral matrix that contains many micronutrients, and these also aid in cell growth, fat metabolism, energy generation, and once again, supports phase one detox. In addition, you can actually use power cleanse as a male replacement. Nutritional Frontiers Lean Greens. I've been informed that it's been updated and actually contains a proprietary uh, supplement that uh, increases the glutathione in your cells. So Lean Greens is even better than it was before. And it's specially designed to support liver detoxification and digestive health. How does it do that? Well, it contains a combination of over 40 nutrient-rich rich veggies and fruits and herbs with additional enzymes and probiotics, adding, the, adding antioxidants. So it's going to provide excellent support for both phase one and phase two detoxification. It also contains spirulina and chlorella. And both are potent antioxidants that support healthy functioning of the liver and aid in the detoxification and breakdown of heavy metals, which are particularly hard to get rid of. I'm recommending one to two servings a day for the power glands during my detox. I usually recommend one to two servings a day. And finally, my last one that I'm recommending is the lymphatic tincture. So the lymphatic tincture is a blend of herbs that supports the lymphatic system throughout the entire body. Remember I talked about the lymphatic system being the Rodney Denger field of uh, the detoxification and elimination system because it just doesn't get the respect that it deserves. But we're going to give it some respect right now. We're adding a lymphatic tincture. And it's going to help remove uh, waste, debris, dead blood cells, pathogens, and toxins. And I usually recommend, although the suggested recommendation is one to two droppers three to six times daily, uh, I personally usually recommend uh, one to two droppers, one to two times a day. If you're interested in the ingredients, they're on the right. Uh, many of the speakers have already talked about these wonderful products, including Mike Gallagher in his presentation, Tracy Strout. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, Jamie is going to be talking about it as well. Jamie Dorley, CEO of Nutritional Frontiers. So this is the summary for the detoxification program. Reduce your exposure to toxic chemicals as much as possible. Eat organic for your water, at least filter. Uh, definitely with a carbon filter to try to get rid of some of those dangerous fungicides. Increase high fiber foods and foods that are especially helpful to your liver and your kidneys. I listed. Follow my detoxification recommendations for food, water, and cosmetics, even if you're not going to do a formal detox. And try a 14 to 28 day detox, as I've discussed, and include these supplements, the very least, very least. The power cleanse, the lean greens, and the lymphatic tincture.
So hopefully by now you understand that your liver is a workhorse, workhorse. It naturally converts toxins into waste products. It cleanses your blood, metabolizes nutrients and medications, and much more that we simply did not have the time to discuss. However, when faced with a toxic overload caused by the sum total of dietary, environmental, and internal toxins that you may be exposed to on a daily basis, this can overwhelm even a well-functioning detoxification and elimination diet. I've helped many people design and complete a personalized, individualized detoxification cleanse to reduce their liver's work workload and also improve their detoxification pathways, get rid of those stored toxins in the cells and improve their overall health. At the very least, on the completion of my detoxification recommendations, people say, oh my God, I have so much more energy than I had before. The brain fog has lifted. The clouds are gone. I can see clearly now, as well as it helps with so many different types of problems that people come in with. Their gut, irritable bowel syndrome, even all heart problems and blood pressure problems. I use it for all autoimmune disorders. In fact, it's my foundation to start with all autoimmune disorders. So uh, make an appointment to see me. It would be my pleasure to help you. My name is Dr. Honigman. I am at the Weiner Wellness Center, and the phone number is 412-922-9355. My fees are very reasonable. I offer both in-office and telehealth appointments. And that same number, 412-922-9355, can be used to order the products, and they are all on sale for 30% off. So I'm looking forward to seeing you as a client, a patient, and it will be indeed my honor. All right. Here is the uh, disclaimer. This information is provided for educational purposes only, has not been designed to diagnose, treat, or cure any health conditions. The United States Food and Drug Administrations have not evaluated my statements about this health topic or any of my suggested supplement recommendations. So to all of you, have a great day. God bless and be healthy. All right. Great stuff. Thank you, Dr. Honigman, for that amazing presentation. Up next is Erin Carey. She is the podcast uh, expert on sparking wholeness. And I'm going to bring her on right now simply because we have two minutes happening. So good morning, good afternoon, Hi. whatever time it is. Can you hear me okay? We were having I some can. technical issues. Oh, okay. well, perfect. I, I guess we are over our technical issues, so that's good. <laughs> well, Aaron, I'm very excited to hear what you have to say. Uh, I know our audience deals with this. And your, your topic today is practical tips for managing anxiety and stress. You yourself are a CINHC. Can you tell us what those initials stand for? Can you hear me? You're cutting out a little bit. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm a I'm an integ certified integrative nutrition health coach, and so I like to integrate mind, body. You know, whether it's through nutrition, of course, I love talking about nutrition. I love talking about food, but I also think it's really important to understand the connection between stress in our bodies and stress in what we eat. So I am really excited to be sharing today, and my topic is practical tips for managing stress and anxiety because I think we all are under massive amounts of stress and anxiety. And I think, you know, even pre 2020, we were under massive amounts of stress and anxiety. And so I think that this is very timely. Um, you know, even, even the term burnout, if you've heard the term burnout before, that was happening before 2020. And now I feel like people are more burned out than ever. So just some quick background on me because you know i don't want to be sitting here like oh let me tell you how to manage your stress and anxiety but i i do have experience with this myself as a young child i suffered from ptsd diagnosed with depression then i was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and i dealt with 
what I would consider an unregulated brain for a long time where I felt like I was being controlled by something that was out of my control, right? And so developing techniques and strategies to help me deal with the root of the issues of my brain health issues have been completely life-changing for me. And I now I don't take medication. I manage my symptoms. And again, I say that, I don't say that. I'm not saying that everybody should, you know, go jump off your medication right now. That is between you and your practitioner. That is not for me to tell you, but I'm just saying for me, dealing with my root issues were a big part of my healing journey and where I am today. And so some of these tips that I'm going to share can be beneficial for you no matter where you are in your journey, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what your um, diagnosis is, or maybe you're not even diagnosed. Maybe you're just having a hard time because who isn't right now? So that's where I want to start. And so when we're talking about mental health issues, when we're talking about stress and anxiety, I like to think of them as symptoms. They are not the actual diagnosis in themselves. They are symptoms of underlying imbalances in our internal and external environment. So whether you have an internal environment that is way out of control maybe you have some you know autoimmune stuff maybe you have gut dysbiosis maybe you have um you know thyroid food sensitivities mold issues with mold something in your um, outside environment that's triggering imbalances in the inside environment that's a possibility or maybe there's something external that's going on maybe there you know you've lost a loved one loved one or maybe you are struggling with um, chronic stress at work or maybe you're unemployed you know all of these things can trigger an imbalance and of course it's going to affect the way that we view and perceive the world the nervous system is so so fascinating it is the way that we make sense of everything around us and so if that feels out of whack and out of balance then we might not see things um, the way that we used to and that's very distressing and so I just want to say that if you're experiencing that right now it's real. It is physical. It is not just chemicals in your brain like that we were used to, we were we used to be told that. And, and I just want to validate for you that what you are feeling and experiencing is real and your body is trying to tell you something. Your body is always on your side and your body is there to send signals when something is off. And so stress, feeling extremely overwhelmed. And I'll just even say when we're talking about stress and anxiety, I'm going to use them interchangeably for the sake of this presentation. I do think they show up differently. And I think sometimes one feeds the other, just depending on what it is. So like anxiety, for example, I'll show, I'll tell you how it shows up for me. Racing thoughts. That's, that's a symptom of anxiety for me. Gut discomfort. Like, you know, that feeling where maybe, um, you feel all of a sudden just like some pain in your gut or maybe you feel like you need to go to the bathroom or maybe you're feeling bloated a lot. That can be a symptom of anxiety that's going on. Um, maybe you can't focus, you're having a hard time focusing on one task and I think there are a lot of other reasons for that these days but um, that's definitely a symptom of anxiety that we just have so much going on we cannot, our brains can't make sense of what is right in front of us. Fast breathing. If you feel like all of a sudden your breath rate is changing, that can be a symptom of anxiety. Um, maybe a little bit of a shakiness. Sometimes I feel a shakiness when I'm experiencing anxiety. It could be a blood sugar issue too, and we're going to get to that. Um, rattled mind. And I say rattled mind, it's just that you just feel discombobulated discombobulated. I love that word. Um, that could be a symptom of anxiety as well. Now, stress, being overly stressed, while it is similar to anxiety, I notice in me, it shows up differently. And a lot of people, it's that feeling where you can't take a deep breath. Like at the end of the day, you're settling down for bed and you're like, Whew, why can't why can't I breathe all the way in? You know, and I've had this this year, and there have been times I'm like, wait, do, is it COVID? Do I have COVID? I can't I can't take a breath. But it is my stress. It is feeling completely weighed down by everything that's going on in the world. Um, maybe there could be pain in your shoulders, your upper back. Uh, sometimes for me, my stress shows up in my lower back. So, st so stress and anxiety, while they are very much connected, I think stress can fuel anxiety. I think anxiety can fuel stress. I think that they go together like hand in hand, but they're not exactly the same thing. And for purposes of this, I'm going to use them interchangeably just because I think that both, um, both of them are impacting all of us. And the tips that I'm going to give you today are tips that can be helpful for helping to lower your stress load and to help lower your anxiety. So 
a little a little information about our thoughts, right? Our thoughts are really, really powerful. They are chemical messengers that flow throughout our whole body, right? So when you have a thought, whether it's negative, positive, maybe it's something that you think is going to happen. Maybe it's something that did happen. Maybe it's something that you're worrying might happen. That sends a message to the rest of your body and your body picks up on that. And so imagine if you're thinking negative thoughts all the time, you're sending negative messages to your body. If you're feeling anxious thoughts all the time, you are sending anxious thoughts to your body. And so, you know, we often use that example of fight or flight and being in fight or flight. And I think people will be like, oh, it's like you're running from a tiger all the time. Let's let's think of something other than running from a tiger. It's just you are on the go all the time. Something is coming after you and you're trying to get ahead of it. Maybe it's um, you're in a car chase, right? Some of us in the modern lifestyle, we feel like we are in a car chase all the time because we can't see to make it ahead of our stress, right? It feels like there's always something else that needs to be done. There's always something in my mind. I mean, gosh, you know how a lot of people say that their best thinking happens in the shower. I mean, don't you just get in the shower sometime and this is your time to be alone with your thoughts. And it's like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do, and all of a sudden it's just flooding through. That, those are, your thoughts are sending messages to your entire body when you are feeling those rapid racing thoughts and it can be very overwhelming. And even being in that state of fight or flight or being in that chronic stress state, it impacts your digestion. It can shut your digestion down. It impacts blood sugar regulation. It impacts your reproductive hormones. It impacts your blood pressure. And so again, your thoughts are not just, oh, these things that I think, and yeah, sometimes I'm negative, or oh, I just can't, you know. No, your thoughts are telling your body what to do, and your thoughts are telling your body how to respond. And I think that that's something just to to think about and, and be aware of. And so my number one tip, I have three tips, and then I'm gonna give you uh, five triggers for anxiety, but your number one tip for dealing with stress and anxiety is learning to own your thoughts. Some people would call this mindfulness, but I have an acronym that I've developed for just helping myself regulate my brain. And sorry, I'm also a parent. So if you hear kids in the background, just know that, <laughs> that that's just living the life. And that also contributes to stress levels, right? But so own your thoughts. Own is an acronym that's O-W-N. And then and the O, the letter O in own stands for observe your thoughts. So when you find yourself in a stressed out state or you're feeling those symptoms of anxiety or stress, the first thing you want to do is pause and observe and go, huh, that's really interesting. I just, all of a sudden, I just feel this weight on my body. And all of a sudden I feel just this heaviness on my chest. And I, I, it's weird. Like I, I just, I feel really easily triggered. I want to snap at my kids or my husband or whoever's around me. Just observe that. Don't be judgmental because I think a lot of times we stress ourselves out by being annoyed by our stress, right? That, that makes things worse, but just go, huh, that's really interesting. So the W in that, after you're observing, you're just kind of going, okay, what else is happening here? The W would be, what is underneath that? What is causing that? Why am I feeling that way? And so it could be, gosh, I have a lot going on. And our family is, is struggling with a lot. And so now, oh, that's interesting. It's showing up in my body. So again, we're still observing, but we're asking why. Or maybe there is an issue of, of a core belief. That, and it's a core negative belief. It's something, it's a lie that you've believed for a long time. Maybe you're feeling unworthy and it's just causing you to have that stress or anxiety response. You're feeling that the world is out of control. Maybe it's not a safe place. Um, maybe feeling that your emotions are too much. So you want to stuff them. I know for many of us, it's a lot easier to be busy and distract ourselves with activity than to actually sit in our negative or unpleasant. I don't even want to say negative because that word is negative. Sit in our unpleasant emotions. That can be really hard. So the W, so O, again, I'm going to repeat it again. O would be observe. So we're observing our thoughts. W is asking ourselves what or why. And N stands for negate. We want to negate any core belief that is not true. We want to negate that with truth. And we want to develop whether it is a scripture verse that, that you, that holds you, keeps you grounded, or it could be a mantra. It could be a statement you say. Sometimes I say something like, I'm doing the best I can with what I have, because that's all I can do. I, do you know how many times I said that to myself last year? 
<laughs> it's, it's just been a crazy time. And there are times when I want to snap at people. I want to engage on social media debates, which is just like such a waste of my mental and stress energy. We all have a stress load. And if I'm all of a sudden getting myself involved in debating somebody over social media who is not going to ever see my side anyway, well, all that's doing is moving up my stress load. It's doing nothing for them. I'm wasting my time. So it's it's good to take a pause and go, okay, what is causing this this feeling, this triggery feeling in me. So we want to negate it with truth. And then, so I'm going to repeat those one more time. O is observe your thoughts. Don't be judgmental. Just observe like that is very interesting. What is going on here? W is what or why is causing this. And then N is negate that thought with truth. And that's really helpful for me because again, like I said, I get easily wound up, easily triggered, and there's a lot going on in the world that drives me nuts. But if I can step back and go, how is this threatening my view of the world? What is this doing for my survival here? And if I, you know, if I realize, oh, I'm feeling I'm feeling discombobulated or I'm feeling um, triggered, I'm feeling tense, whatever that is, because I'm not regulating my brain to begin with, because I'm getting too involved in that argument. I'm not, I'm not taking the second to be calm and question and just check in with myself. And so that's really important. We, if you don't manage your stress, your stress is going to manage you. So again, if you're not learning to manage these things and manage these responses, it's going to show up in your body and it's it's going to wear you down over time. And you might start struggling with mystery, physical health issues. Um, but really, we're de we're not dealing with the things that are causing an issue up here. And it does, you know, it does go both ways. And so I, I will get into the nutrition piece in a minute. But I want to give a few practical tips other than owning your thoughts um, as far as regulating your brain and helping because our, our unconscious mind and our conscious mind are constantly in battle, right? And there are a lot of things that go on in our in our unconscious. And when, when we're sleeping, we might be having crazy dreams. I don't know about you guys, but I am hearing from so many people that are just having wild and crazy dreams right now. And it's like when we're resting, we can't even rest, right? And so some, some things that can help with that just to get ourselves into that calming state. One thing that I love that I recently started doing is called the morning pages. And that means every morning I wake up 30 minutes before anybody else in my house. Now, sometimes I still have like small children. So sometimes this works well. Sometimes this does not work well. And sometimes my kids join me and that's fine. They see me dealing with my stress. Uh, but morning pages, it's a strategy. It is from a book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And it's supposed to inspire creativity. But I think there's something really impactful about waking up and being in this almost dreamlike state and not quite being ready to wake up. But all of a sudden you just start writing. And it's stream of consciousness writing for three pages. So if you remember from your English class, I don't know if your English teacher ever did this, but um, we would have these moments where it's like, just start writing. Don't stop. Whatever you can do, just keep writing. Even if you say, I don't know what to write about, say, I don't know what to write about. Eventually you'll come up with something. And it is absolutely true for this. When I wake up, my brain just dumps onto the page. <laughs> and sometimes I'm still tired and I don't have anything. Sometimes I'm writing about the weird dreams that I had, which can also be really therapeutic. But the morning pages have been really helpful for me. And I know a lot of people want to wake up in the morning and hit the ground running and do a workout. And that used to be me, but I am learning when I'm in a stressed out state, when I am dealing with just this complete overwhelm in the world, that it is way more beneficial for me to start by hitting the ground, slowing down. Okay. So instead of hit the ground running, which is my default, I hit the ground by slowing down, processing, and that puts my brain in a more regulated state. Um, along with that, I would say before bed, do a brain dump. That's something that could be beneficial as well. Now, it could be a verbal brain dump. Maybe you're talking to your spouse, your partner, whatever, and you're just like telling them the highs and the lows of the day. But sometimes, again, writing is very powerful. And I'm not talking about just putting things in the notes of your phone because I do that a lot and that's my go-to, but that isn't as soothing as actually putting pen to paper, hand, brain to hand to pen. There's something about that that's very impactful. And so writing down the things of the day that disappointed you, or maybe the things in the day that you didn't get done, that you wanted to get done, and maybe you need to give yourself some grace. Write that down. Where do you need to give yourself a break? Like, I really meant to do this, but 
it is okay, tomorrow's a new day. Because again, we are so hard on ourselves about the things that we are doing, we aren't doing, and I wanna make sure that the tips I'm giving you, you don't have to do all these things. Just pick one, just pick one little thing that can help you and, and make a difference in your stress levels and your anxiety levels. Um, the other thing, you know, breathing exercises, I swear by the four, seven, eight breathing, and that is you breathe in for four seconds, hold it for seven seconds, and breathe out for eight seconds. And what that looks like is we can just do it together here. We're going to breathe in through our nose, hold it, and breathe out through our mouths. And even just doing that, I don't know about you, but I feel my body just melt into the chair a little bit. And that is a feeling that I need to have on the regular. And so you can do that in traffic. You can do that when you're about to freak out at your kids. <laughs> you can do that um, when you are feeling all those physical symptoms of tension and anxiety and stress and overwhelm. I really love that. That's And there are tons of different breathing exercises, but that's one of my favorites. Um, you can also do... Tapping, tapping is a strategy that has been helpful for a lot of people. And that's where you take, there are different pressure points. You start here and you tap a few times and then you go here, here. There are YouTube videos of it here. It sounds crazy and woo-woo, but I will tell you, it works. And it's just activating acupressure points in your body that can calm you down. And doing that alongside of breathing, um, I don't have time to explain that right now, but you can look that up on your own. Now, another thing as far as just helping to regulate our brain, this is still number one, this is still owning our thoughts, this is still taking, taking charge of our, our brain first, um, GABA. GABA stands, stands for gamma amino butyric acid, I want to make sure I say that right. This is a neurotransmitter that we all are supposed to be producing, and it helps to reduce excitability, it helps to reduce the anxiety and the panic feelings, right? It's kind of your brain's natural volume. And when we are under too much stress, we can actually be depleted of GABA. And if you're a female and your progesterone is out of whack, that can also impact your GABA and, and what kind of GABA you produce as well. And so that's something, if, you, if your hormones are off, your GABA might possibly be off as well. And so I'm gonna read off some symptoms of low GABA because this is something you can supplement with. And I know Nutritional Frontiers, um, I'll explain that there are a couple products that have GABA that very helpful. Um, but symptoms of low GABA include anxiety, feeling overwhelmed or stressed, panic attacks, unable to relax or loosen up. Again, like it's the day and you're like, okay, I should be calm. I should be ready for bed, but I still feel tense. I still feel like there's something I need to be doing. I still feel like I'm missing something. Um, that is a symptom of low GABA as well. Stiff or tense muscles, like I already described, feeling stressed and burned out, craving, this is my favorite one, <laughs> craving carbs, alcohol, or drugs for relaxation and calming. How many people, I feel like this last year, alcohol sales have probably skyrocketed because so many people are like, okay, I'm just going to wind down with some wine. I'm just going to wind down with, you know, whatever whatever it is it gives me comfort and it helps me to calm down but if you have any of those symptoms and you find yourself feeling that overwhelm you could really benefit from taking a GABA supplement um, l-theanine is another supplement that might be beneficial it's an amino acid that is found in green tea it can raise your level levels of GABA um, and it does have a calming effect on stress and so I will say uh, my oldest child that is she's a musician and anytime she's about to get on stage and um, perform and play her bass I know that she loves taking L-theanine because it helps her chill out it can help people focus as well for me I benefit more from just straight up GABA there's um, a supplement I take called GABA Calm that I really love I also love like I mentioned before nutritional frontiers has L-theanine also there's a supplement called calm day that contains GABA and I'm telling you it is instant. here's the funny thing about GABA you feel calmer instantly and I know for many people we are used to medications that might take a little bit longer oh let's wait two or three weeks and see what happens with GABA it is instantaneous uh, sleep time is another supplement from nutritional frontiers that is amazing it has GABA I think it also contains melatonin and 5-HTP and 5-HTP is a whole other topic we could get into that I don't have time for today if you are interested I'm going to give you a reference real fast this book it's called I don't know if you can see it 
there's a glare. The Anti-Anxiety Food Solution by Trudy Scott. She has a really detailed list of um, different GABA supplements, ideas, or um, ways that you can add in 5-HTP, some of these amino acids that can help support our brain health. So I have to give that shout out because I learned a lot from reading the work of people like her and Julia Ross when it comes to helping our brain through amino acids. Now, number two, okay, so number one, that whole thing that I was just sharing is just about how to own our thoughts and start to calm down our body's response to stress and anxiety. Again, we don't wanna be mad at ourselves for being stressed or anxious. We don't want to distract our bodies by getting involved and being busy and doing more things. And we want to listen. When we are feeling that way, we wanna listen and we wanna ask non-judgmental questions and we want to tune in and ask what does my body need so number two we want to optimize digestion this one is so huge and it is not discussed enough and this is the thing i always say and if you ever hear me talk or listen to my podcast or <laughs> see you know peek onto my instagram i will say this over and over again until people get it my coaching groups my coaching clients know this a body in stress won't digest. If you are stressed, it's going to be really hard to utilize the nutrients that are in your food. And the irony is, is that we really need, we get our neurotransmitters from protein and we need to be able to create these neurotransmitters from the protein that we eat. But if we can't digest it to begin with, are we even getting the neurotransmitters that we need to calm our bodies down? And so that's something that we want to start, we wanna think about. And we wanna think if we are having digestive disturbances, it's going to be impacting the way our brain functions. It's same for kids. Um, this is not a talk for kids, but I think what's really interesting I've noticed is that oftentimes in kids, and I know a lot of kids are anxious right now, they're not going to say I'm anxious. They're going to say my tummy hurts, or they're going to start having constipation or bathroom issues. Kids know their bodies. And so if your child is complaining of those issues, that's, that's something to listen in and go, okay, what's happening? I always go, I mean, that's my number one question anyway. What's happening in their brain? What is that doing to their brain right now? <laughs> so um, we want to look at optimizing digestion. One thing is we really want to balance our meals and make sure that you're including a lot of healthy brain boosting fats. I love calling them brain boosting fats because that's what they are. And when I'm talking about brain boosting fats, I'm talking about extra virgin olive oil. I'm talking about avocados, I'm talking about even avocado oil and um, fatty fish, salmon, uh, oysters. Lately, I've been hooked on canned smoked oysters, which drives my family crazy because it stinks up the entire kitchen. But it is a really helpful, nourishing brain food that um, contains lots of nutrients that are beneficial for the brain. And so you want to look at adding in those healthy fats. Oh, grass fed butter. You know, I will talk about dairy in a minute because that might be triggering for some people, but ghee is a really good one. Um, we've gone so backwards. You, you guys, if you're watching this, you probably know, <laughs> but we've gone really backwards in trying to, um, you know, use these vegetable oils and, you know, canola oil and all that. Those things are so inflammatory and they are not beneficial for our brain and they're not helpful for our anxiety or stress levels or any of that. And so I'm really big on adding in brain boosting fats and with your fats, including Include a wide variety of veggies. We don't want our bodies to get used to the same thing all the time, but we want to have a wide variety because the colors of your veggies make a difference. So don't just put a red bell pepper in which I guess some people would consider bell peppers a fruit. I'm calling it a veggie. Um, don't put just a red bell pepper with your meal. Add the yellow and the orange because they're going to have different benefits. And I, that goes for fruit too. You know, add berries, every single type of berry you can imagine, add that in there. And I'm really big on trying to get people to add five veggies, two times, two meals a day for five days, five to five. If you can do that for a week, you will notice a difference in your mental clarity. You're going to feel a lot better. Vegetables contain amazing prebiotic fiber, fat soluble vitamins, things that we need to help create neurotransmitters to benefit our brain. We all have heard about the gut brain connection and the vagus nerve, and we have that gut brain highway going on. And so we need to be feeding our bodies with that, which is going to be nourishing to our brain. And so I'm really big on, you know, at lunchtime, add in five veggies, whether that's leafy greens, you know, that might be a salad for you. So leafy greens, onions, uh, bell peppers, cucumber, 
maybe some herbs like cilantro, parsley, super healing. That's five right there. You know, add in your protein, maybe add in some quinoa because that, that can be a good source of protein for some people. Whatever you want, add in olive oil. So now you can be absorbing all these things, just a big, delicious, fatty salad. It will fill you up. Salads used to not fill me up because I did them all wrong. I thought it was just, oh, <laughs> romaine, lettuce, Caesar dressing, and chicken. That is not filling. <laughs> That's not nourishing for me. Um, so I'm really big on five. So that would be five different veggies for lunch. Then at dinner time, you and this is what we do in our family. We do a lot of bowl style eating. So I just put on my Instagram, I've been making a lot of reels, which are just short videos on my Instagram about all the different ways that I add in veggies at dinner. So sometimes if I don't want to have a grain, if I don't want to have rice or, um, you know, uh, quinoa or something like that, that my family might be having, I will do potatoes. I will dice potatoes, small pieces, roast them. I will add that to a bowl with a protein, which I'll talk about in a minute because quality matters, with a protein with all different kinds of sauteed or roasted veggies. Just toss that in a bowl, maybe throw in a little guacamole that I make from avocado and cilantro and jalapeno, whatever it is. Toss it in, mix it up, and it tastes delicious. I've never met a veggie that doesn't work well with other veggies. They work well with others. You want to put them together. They are made to be nourishing for us. And sometimes we are we get so used to eating the same thing time and time again that our body can launch an attack against that substance. And so we really want to make sure that we are nourishing ourselves with a wide variety of things at all times. Quality protein. So I talked about brain boosting fats and veggies. Quality protein, that's really important. Grass fed, antibiotic free, you know, um, wild caught, and we're talking about sea animals. Uh, that makes a difference. And so I am just a big fan <laughs> of trying to add variety of protein as well because I used to be on only a beef kick. And I will say the reason I was on a grass fed beef kick is because. I found out that uh, grass-fed beef is beneficial for my brain, B vitamins, iron, you know, all the good stuff. And I didn't ever have it because I was told it was too fatty and don't have beef. Well, I switched to only eating mostly grass-fed beef. Well, pretty soon I noticed symptoms in my body going, oh, it's time to change it up. And so now I'm really working hard to make sure I'm including more fish into my diet. And it's, it's just a game we want to play constantly. And here's the other thing. I will say this, if this is sounding stressful for you right now, and if you are thinking, I can't do this, this is too much, I'm trying to homeschool my kids, maybe for some of you, or I'm trying to help them deal with all the changes that are going on in the world, I'm trying to work full time, I'm trying to do, right, like we have a thousand things that we need to do. If this sounds stressful for you, I want maybe to reframe the way we think about food and the way we think about preparing food. Sometimes just the act of preparing food and taking time to prepare our food, that sends a signal to our body. Hey, I care about you. I care about what I am putting into you. I care about the time that I'm putting into this. And so find a way to make it work for you. Maybe on Sunday you do cut up some veggies or potatoes or whatever it is. Maybe you cook things ahead of time so that all you have to do throughout the week is just dump things in a pan or dump things in a, in a, um, a pot or whatever. You know, maybe that's something that's helpful for you. But I want to reframe the way we think about I don't have time. That, that phrasing is such a killer, right? Oh, I don't, I don't have time to do the vegetables. I'm just going to order out. I'm just, and that's true. You absolutely have the option to do that. And there are some options when we order out and take out there are different restaurants that, that are, that are pretty good and will be nourishing as well. But I want you to think about the time that you take to prepare your meals sends a signal to your body. It sends a signal to your digestion. It's going to help you activate, which we're about to talk about digestive enzymes that will help break things, these things down. Now I'm, I'm looking at my time and I'm realizing I'm talking about this one topic way longer than I thought I was going to. So I want to talk a little bit about what food is stressing you out. And for a lot of people, and you're going to hate me for saying this, but I, I know it's true for a lot of people, gluten and dairy can trigger stressful responses in the body. And it, they might not be the most beneficial when we're talking about dealing with anxiety, stress, mental health, all of that. Gluten can potentially cause or trigger leaky gut, even in people without celiac. There are numerous studies. If you go to PubMed or wherever you get like to get your research articles, you can look at all of the different studies of people decreasing anxiety. There are studies on schizophrenia and reducing gluten and how that changes symptoms for schizophrenia as well. Um, 
you, I mean, there, there's just a lot out there. You also have a lot of people that are saying gluten is fine. And whether it is the gliadin in the gluten that triggers the release of zonulin to cause a leaky gut, that's one theory, whether it's that or whether it's the pesticides that we spray on our gluten, or whether it is the way that we've enriched all of our wheat with folic acid that may not be helpful for many people with mental health issues. I don't know. I don't know exactly, and, I, and I'm fine with saying I don't know what it is exactly about gluten that can cause problems for people, but it does, and we have the research to show it. Um, dairy also is another one, and I know we love our cheese, um, especially, you know, we, we think of cheese as like, it's like our ketchup, right? Like we put it on everything, and especially for little kids, it's a quick snack, but they really are gluten and dairy together. They are the most common foods that cause some of these delayed food sensitivities in people. They are inflammatory, and um, I was even just reading the other day, a friend of mine, very smart um, psychologist who also has studied nutrition extensively, they can react with the opiate receptors in our brain and they can be the cause of many mental health issues. So sometimes it's okay to say, you know what? I'm gonna cold turkey, go off of gluten for a while and see what happens. I've had to do that with my kids and it makes, even within five days, I will notice a difference in my kids' anxiety if I take them off of gluten. And I'm talking about every little tiny little speck and that is hard to do. And again, if this feels too stressful for you, then go, go back to number one and learn to manage your stress through breathing and owning your thoughts and doing that first. This might not be the step that you're ready for and that's okay. But for some of you, you might be ready to level up in other ways and getting off of gluten can level things up. Um, getting off of dairy as well. And even if you do, you know, maybe you do like food sensitivity testing or other testing to figure out what food is causing inflammation for you, you might not see it show up on a test that it's problematic for you, but you might find that just eliminating that as an added stressor could still be beneficial. I know for me, um, I run better <laughs> when I'm not eating gluten. I can't explain it. But again, if I'm listening to my body and I'm, if my body is constantly sending me signals that I need to pick up on, that's something that I've picked up on. And I think it's pretty interesting. Okay, you know, I'm going to say it. I'm going to talk about sugar. We got to talk about sugar. When we're talking about anxiety, when we're talking about stress, that is stressful to our bodies. And so the blood sugar roller coaster, we could think that we, we could be thinking that we are having uh, panic attacks. It could just be symptoms of, excuse me, blood sugar that is way out of balance. And so that's something to check in on. If when we get hooked on the quick energy solution, which is glucose, when we're like, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry, I'm just gonna grab a handful of pretzels, it might not actually do anything for your hunger and it might not actually do anything for your blood sugar levels. It might just give you that quick hit of glucose and if your body is stressed out, your body might be on overload from that anyway. So uh, my solution for that would be to really, really be consciously minimizing the sugar that you have. And if you feel that you are addicted to sugar, if you feel that you can't quit sugar, go back to what I was talking about with GABA and, and maybe start adding in a GABA supplement to help with that. I know that 5-HTP can also be helpful for that um, because sometimes we are just so, again, we need that hit. Sometimes it's a dopamine thing. You know, we just need something that's going to make us feel good. And we know if we keep doing that over and over again, we're going to get the same response. So our brain likes that. Our brain gets really excited by sugar because it's something familiar. It's a neural pathway that we have created and we keep going to that over and over again. So we really get hooked on sugar, but I, I want to remind you of what, back when I was talking about balancing meals before I talked about the quality of protein and the fat and the fiber, when we are balancing our meals and adding in all of the veggies, especially when we're adding in things like um, the, the starchy vegetables, like sweet potatoes. Oh, I love those carrots. If you bake carrots, roast them, put a little cinnamon with them. Oh my goodness. They, they're so good. It's basically like a dessert. Um, when you're putting in crowding in as i would say kind of like how we talk about probiotics or crowding in the bacteria when we're crowding in those good starchy carbs sometimes our sugar cravings can decrease as a side effect which is kind of awesome um one thing i need to note is i kind of alluded to it before is that we lose important enzymes that we need to digest our food as we age and so we're not as able to break down our food 
in the way that we used to. So for some people, you might benefit, especially if you're feeling digestive discomfort after meals, and you know that there are certain things that are triggering you, and you accidentally, you know, you got glutened or whatever, um, you might benefit from having digestive enzymes and taking those with your meals. And again, Nutritional Frontiers has a great has has some great solutions for that. You can look at that. Um, but the other thing that can be beneficial is bitters. You can spray. There are ways to find bitter herbs that you spray into your mouth before you eat. Or, you know, maybe maybe you're married to a mixologist and you just have um, bitters for cocktails. Maybe that's you. You can try just put some of those in your mouth before you eat. Because what that does is it's going to stimulate digestive juices that we need to get our digestion working. If we are eating too fast, if we're not chewing our food enough, we are not going to be able to break it down. And what do we need to be able to create calming neurotransmitters? We need to be able to break our food down. So we're just talking in a circle here because this is all connected. The other thing I will say that we can do is we can remove, uh, there are, might be other triggers, things that are bothering you. Um, I recently did myself, I did a food inflammation test and I found out that one of my very favorite snacks was causing issues for me and I knew it because I, I had this rash that I could not get rid of. Even when I eliminated some of the common triggers, the common triggers are gluten, dairy, soy, corn. Those are very common. Um, I would even, you know, sugar, I would throw that in there as well. But um, when I did my testing, I saw, oh my goodness, there is something in here that is a healthy food that I love to eat. And it's triggering this rash on my face and face. And when I removed it, it went away. So of course, my question is, if it's happening on my face, what's it doing to my gut? And that's another thing. If you're struggling with skin issues, if you're struggling with gut issues and brain fog, all of that, all of this can be connected to a food issue. And so you maybe want to do a little digging on that. Um, you know, we all have a capacity for stress and it's for some of us, it's genetic. You know, we all have a certain load of stressors that we can handle before our body goes alert, <laughs> alert, I need help. And sometimes environmental toxins can be very triggering. So I've spoken about this before, but you might really want to look at, do you have mold in your house? Do you, what are the cleaning products that you use? Because I'm telling you those chemical cleaning products that they are spraying everywhere right now can be very neurotoxic and very harmful in the long term. And so you want to stay away from those skin products, the lotions that you use, download the app, think dirty, or look at the skin deep database on the environmental working group find out about your water look up if you are drinking tap regular tap water go ahead and do a search on environmental working group see what's in your tap water because i looked at mine and wasn't a big fan <laughs> to find out what was in the water that we would occasionally boil for you know coffee to put our french press like i don't want to drink coffee that has all those toxins in them so pay attention to that because eventually if we have, say our, our toxin load is here and we just keep, or our stress load, sorry, I said toxin load, but toxins affect that. So if this is our stress load, this is what we can handle, this is it. Well, all of a sudden we've got, you know, regular emotional stress in our real life. We've got kids stress, we have work, we have um, food stress, like I just explained, food can be stressing you out. We have chemical toxins we have electromagnetic frequencies like all of a sudden oh and we're not sleeping I haven't even talked about that well look here look at my stress load I can't stand up under this weight now so we really want to look at all of those external triggers that can be impacting our stress so number one was own your thoughts number two is optimize digestion which I could talk about forever and the third thing I'm gonna say is Go easy on the movement when you're feeling stress and anxiety, because some of us, our go-to is, I'm going to do high intensity interval training. It's going to make me feel so much better. Or, I'm going to start training for a marathon or I'm going to do, you know, I'm waking up in the morning and like I said, hitting the ground running, but that might be, and, and, you know, exercise is a stressor in and of itself. It's a great stressor. It's a hormetic stressor is what it's considered. But if your stress load is already heavy, again, you're here and now you're going to add on exercise, that could be problematic. So you don't want to be killing yourself at the gym every day, even if you think this is how you cope, because we can't get addicted to exercise. And I would call that if you feel like you can't stop running or you can't, that is a dopamine dysregulation issue. So you need to get that checked out. <laughs> you need to really own your thoughts there and ask, what is it that keeps me, that, that makes me so, um, 
unable to not work out every day. That, that is a whole other issue that maybe you want to check in with yourself on. But if you are doing that every day and you feel like you have to, it's really hard for your body to repair from that. It might affect your sleep and you really need to make sure you're getting enough sleep if you're going to be adding on that stressor. And for females, you don't want to be pushing yourself too hard at every single phase in your cycle. Something that's been really helpful for me is I start tracking every single phase of my cycle because I'm of a certain age, I'm not going to say what certain age, but things are changing and I want to be mindful of that and I want to embrace that and I don't want it to impact my mental health because I've been through enough. And so I'm doing what I can to mind my cycle, to honor my cycle, to listen to what my body is telling me. And so when you're, you know, you have your menstrual phase, right? Right after that, you've got follicular and ovulatory phase. During those phases, you can maybe go a little bit harder pace. That first week, week and a half after your period, you might that's where you might want to do some sprinting, some hit activity. You know, that might be good for you. But once you hit the luteal phase, which is the PMS period, um, you want to maybe start listening. Maybe you need to start slowing it down. And when you really hit that menstrual phase, that's when you might need to take a nap instead of exercise. You might need to sleep in 30 more minutes, and that's okay. We want to honor again, our bodies are giving us signals all the time and we want to honor our bodies and instead of going oh i hate my period my period's giving me all these problems or oh my stress i'm so stressed and my anxiety i wish i could find something to fix my anxiety that is stressful you are sending stressful thoughts to the rest of your body it's walking i walking sorry i said that fast walking is an excellent stress reliever slow walking doesn't have to be fast walking that has been my go to lately because i do feel like i have to have some kind of movement it does help me. And so I just walk and I think and I pray. And sometimes I pray out loud like a weirdo or I listen to podcasts or I listen to books or I just listen to silence and I'll go find a tree to sit and stare at. And that is soothing for me. So walking can be really beneficial. All right. So five things. That's Those are my three main points. Own your thoughts, optimize digestion and adjust the intensity of your movement. And so real fast, I'm just something to think about before I get finished. I want to give you five things that might be causing you anxiety that you haven't thought about before that nobody's told you about before. Number one, artificial sweeteners and food dyes. Did you know that aspartame is linked with anxiety? This is a new one for me, but I know we've got so many people that love their Diet Coke and you just can't quit it. Maybe not in this audience, um, but share, share this with someone who does have that problem. That used to be me. Um, but both artificial sweeteners and food dyes, they really can disrupt your nervous system. And think about that with your kids, because I have found artificial sweeteners in yogurt. I have found it in all sorts of crazy kid food that I'm like, why, why are we putting this in here? This is a chemical. Um, so that's number one. Number two, too much screen time. I say this without my blue light blockers on staring at a screen, but blue light from screens can really suppress melatonin and that is needed for restful sleep. Um, the other thing, this is this might be news to you. I've really been digging into this more myself. Screens can disrupt GABA. We've been talking about GABA a lot. Screens can disrupt that. They can disrupt serotonin. Well, you need serotonin to produce melatonin. So see how we're, again, we're just doing the circular. This is all connected. So really try to limit your screen time or time block. You know, like I'm only going to be on a screen from this time to this time. I know for me with my podcast, it is stressful to me to stare at somebody's face, like right there in my face for long periods of time infrequently. And so I've tried to start blocking out time periods just for my podcast. And if you can do that with your work situation, great. If you can't do that, it's beyond your control. But I do love blue light blocking glasses for that. Try to minimize your use of screens before bedtime. That's really big that, um, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to myself here. Everything that I have shared with you, I am sharing because it is something that I need to work on personally or that I have benefited from or something that I'm continuously, continuously learning. So I am not just being some sage on the stage, right? Like I'm just telling you, like these are things we're all dealing with, myself included, and these are things that are helpful for me. So artificial sweeteners, food dyes, too much screen time. Number three thing that can be triggering your anxiety, that is um, a lack of magnesium. Are you taking a magnesium supplement? This could be something that would be a game changer for you. Or maybe it's something that would be a game changer for your kids as well. Because I know personally, I have a little one who it completely changed his sleep when we added in magnesium. And what magnesium does is it's, it's nature's Xanax. It calms your nervous system. It's a muscle relaxer. It prevents 
the creation of excess cortisol, which we know cortisol is a stress hormone and it helps with sleep. So, you know, you can get magnesium from natural sources. Most of us don't get enough, but if we're looking at leafy greens, you know, we love our greens, um, have a smoothie every day with your leafy greens in it, or, um, the greens product from nutritional frontiers also great. Um, Nuts, seeds, legumes, also good source, sources of magnesium, depending on if you can tolerate them or not. Or again, like I said, just supplement, take an Epsom salt bath. Um, that can be really helpful to relax the body, provide better sleep. Again, just little tiny things that we can do. So that's the number three thing that could be triggering your anxiety is a lack of magnesium. Number four, trauma that has not been dealt with or addressed. That could be wrecking your nervous system and wrecking your body. And we store trauma in our bodies and all of us have been through trauma at some point. And if not, you will. So we want to acknowledge our trauma. That kind of goes back to the owning the thoughts. We really want to check in and what's going on. Maybe see a trauma therapist. Maybe you need a therapy like EMDR, which is, if I can remember, eye movement desensitization something. Anyway, it's a great technology for, or not technology, it's a great um, strategy for helping with trauma, EMDR. You can look that one up. Again, I mentioned tapping. That's something that's helpful as well. And so that's the number four thing. So once again, artificial sweeteners and food dyes, too much screen time, lack of magnesium, trauma that you haven't addressed. And the fifth thing that could be triggering your anxiety that I left it for last because it's painful, guys, is excess caffeine. Excess caffeine could be a problem for you. You might feel like you need it and you might feel like it's really just getting you through your day, but depending on how you metabolize your caffeine, having caffeine at 2.30 p.m., 30 minutes after two, like two is my cutoff time. If I have it at 2.30, it's all over for me that night and I won't be able to sleep. And I do love an iced coffee. I do, especially, in, I, I live in Texas and in the summertime, it, it's the best thing ever. So excess caffeine, you really want to, and this is where you need to know your body, know your triggers, and be able to do what you need to do for yourself. Maybe a little bit in the morning when you wake up is fine. Maybe it's that works for you, but too much of a good thing can be too much, right? And that might be causing your anxiety. And I've noticed that myself. If, I, if I'm too caffeinated, my thoughts go ding, 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 like it is it's not pleasant. So be aware of that. Um, I do want to give a side note. <clears throat> this is the last thing I will say is that alcohol is, is a neurotoxin and that can be impacting blood sugar issues. It can be impacting your anxiety, your stress. The thing that you might be thinking is helping you to take the edge off might be the thing that's putting the edge on <laughs> worse. I don't even know if that's a thing. Um, but yeah, so I really, i I um, share all this again because I care, because I'm there with you, and I'm, I'm grateful to have this conversation. I don't know if there are any questions. Um, Tracy, I can throw it back to you. But um, Well, that was awesome. I was taking notes. <laughs> Very good. Such uh, helpful information. And, you know, I mean, I think for us, right, it's like common sense. We're like, oh, we know all this. Mm. And I'm always shocked by how many people truly don't but and mm -hmm. in, in an age of confusion is where we are i mean there's so much information Absolutely. out there what's healthy what's not healthy you have big corporations and diet companies telling you to eat artificial sweeteners that mm -hmm. it's really important that you lose weight and in the process they destroy their brain so yep absolutely incredible information well, thank you so much. Uh, people are just saying that they love the information and um, you had a lot of viewers with you today. So how can they reach out to you, Erin, and connect with your uh, podcast? Yeah, my website is sparkingwholeness.com and my podcast is available on Apple, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher. It's available everywhere. Look for it. If it doesn't play on one platform, check the others. I've had some controversial guests in the past. <laughs> yeah, when I went to uh, listen to your interview, you were shut down. And I texted you. I was like, what happened? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, so that's, I, I'm not going to say much about that. I'm just going to say, <laughs> go to my website. Yes. If, if you go to my if you go to my website, um, you can always find a direct when I mean, you go to there's a I think there's a tab for podcast where it says radio. You can always find the direct download link and that's always going to be available. Um, and yeah, spread spread the word. I'm just trying to get real talk, have real talk about mental health and what we can do to really help instead of just creating more 
cyclical band-aid solution, you know, like, like I, what happened to me many, many years ago. So, yeah. Well, your story is incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. And I look forward to having you back next time. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. You are up for a special treat next. Uh, we have Robert Scott Bell coming on and he's going to be talking about breaking the COVID illusions, the transformation of consciousness and, uh, no truer words have been spoken. So stay tuned because he is coming up next at noon Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for joining us here at the Weiner Wellness Virtual Summit.
Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Weiner Wellness Virtual Summit. I'm so excited that you're here because we have a very special guest, one of my good friends, health freedom advocates, and just amazing individuals. Robert Scott Bell is with us. Hello, Robert, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Okay, we'll hang tight here until you can hear me fine. Okay, yes. great. Well, oh, good. Oh, you, sorry, I just did your intro. So, <laughs> oh, I didn't hear any of that, but now I can hear you fine. So, hopefully, it went well. <laughs> yes, it was a great intro. I really, awesome. I, I really made you sound awesome. So, thanks well, for thank being you. here. I know that um, you spend a lot of your time, you know, you're kind of like the voice of health freedom and advocacy. So, we just really appreciate you making time for us today. And today you're gonna to talk about the transformation of consciousness, breaking the COVID illusion. So I'm I'm really excited to hear what you have to say, but can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and, and your current platform, the Robert Scott Bell Show? Yeah, yeah, my life has all been all about transformation of consciousness through health or lack of health. It's been, you know, my, let, let's say my, uh, I didn't know initially, right? And as I talk about my journey into health and healing, knowing when I was a child, a small child, that I would grow up one day to be a doctor just was in me. It was in my DNA. I just felt it. My, my uncle was a doctor. My dad was a pharmaceutical guy. So the only uh, models I had for doctoring or healing, if you will, was in the medical profession. Didn't know anything about it other than that was just what we were taught. And through my young life from the year zero to age of 19, uh, raised by doctors and, and, and suffered through many ailments that I found out later they had caused, not, in, not on purpose, just because of their treatment, their lack of uh, training on nutrition and detoxification. Uh, there was the, the wake up or epiphany or transformation of consciousness that was part way there. Part of that wake up was, wait a second, you guys don't know what you're doing. You keep giving me drugs. You poison me. I taken shots all, all my life and even had surgery for various ailments and you, you your best answer when I confronted them with what's going to happen in my future was maybe you want one day you'll grow out of it uh, just this, I'm th all of these things are racing through my head as I try to describe this journey in condensed fashion we may have discussed this before Tracy as well uh, but that was the wake up at 19 now it took about four or five years from that point when I had the the grand disillusionment of medicine as answer to everything we talk about modern medicine that i was open enough and ready enough to receive another path if you will a pathway in health and healing uh, the word homeopathy for me learning of that was uh you know transformational if you will i had to be open to it and i had to be i guess beaten down by life itself to be willing to say there's something else beside modern medicine and so my journey into that form of healing was one that in, in, encompassed a transformation of how I viewed food, right? Food up until that point as a traditional American was the fastest, cheapest, easiest way to get it. Just put it in. <laughs> it didn't matter the quality. There was no question of if it was a fast food drive through fine, just hit it. If it's a soda with carbonation and sugars and colors, and it's okay. Just drink it, right? It's better than water. It tastes better than water, all of that. So <laughs> my ignorance or lack of consciousness about uh, my diet and its impact on health or medicines that put into me and my impact on health, complete ignorance because I was programmed just like most Westerners to believe that modern medicine had conquered nature and that whatever ailed you, whatever symptom came across your way or in your body that you just reach out and, get, and they'll give a prescription, uh, you know, right on their pad, you get it, you get it filled and you'll be on your merry way and that's it. But it was a, a degradation of health from zero, age zero to again, 24 was when I woke up and started changing. I went organic began to use homeopathy. You know, at my lecture, I did a, a brief homeopathy 101 plus lecture, clinical homeopathy uh, for friends at Trinity uh, to give people an insight into what I learned, which is a form of clinical um, management, if you will, not, it's not so much management, but reversal of disease via the three basic concepts of elimination, assimilation, and free radical inflammation, you know, and how they all connect. And so that transformation of consciousness allowed me to reverse course and age in reverse, right? Because I had old age diseases as a child 
through my young adult years and reverse them now at, you know, 55. It's amazing to say that I'm um, able to do things I couldn't do in my 20s. Uh, so the process of transformation of consciousness is accelerating in our time of what I call the era of COVID crazy, that we are being somewhat almost forced to confront uh, the limitations of modern medicine, the dangers of vaccination or whatever they're calling vaccination nowadays, mRNA in injections, and the difficulty or the discomfort I felt as a young person that put me on a search, a journey for health and healing, also put me on a search and a journey for my connection to the divine, the most divine spiritual connection, right? It was actually the spiritual depths that I went to to open myself up to the principles and laws of creation that would allow me to be open enough to say, hey, homeopathy, that's an interesting thing. I'm, I'm not going to dismiss it out of hand because the priestcraft and the church of pharmaceutical mysticism don't approve of it, right? It's non-material. It's not relying on substance. It's working with energy and metabolism and, you know, more quantum concepts of reality, you mm -hmm. know, life as energy as opposed to just being physical molecules. And so uh, it was a long convoluted journey, but my suffering, all of those ailments and illnesses served a purpose, a great purpose to wake me up, to shake me out of maybe a, a, a slumber, a comfort in even my discomfort. And you've heard this, Tracy, you know this, that people may come to you only when they're so uncomfortable with their present circumstance that they're willing to consider changing their diet or lifestyle. Right. But how much suffering does it take for an individual to make that change? Now, I had my limit, you know, as a young man, somebody might not hit that limit with the same amount of suffering or similar suffering in their 40s, 50s, 60s or 70s. And who am I to determine or judge when it's right for a person? They have to determine it. We each come to that moment when we come to that moment. And when and so, you're talking about that transformation of consciousness, one of the things that I've noticed, and I'm sure you'll touch on it, it's become the norm to have some sort of dis-ease of the body. They're almost like markers of growth, right? In babies, you see skin rashes, ear infections, breathing issues, colic, and then we get into um, you know elementary age, Right. And those kids, they start developing allergies and then we get into teenage age and those kids start to have abnormal hormone issues. And then our 20s and our 30s and like every decade of life has some sort of disease associated with it now that we're like, oh, it's just normal. I'm 20. Oh, it's just normal. I'm 40. And it's become so commonplace that people feel bad, yeah. but they think that's just how it's supposed to be. Tracy, you're so right. And, and the thing is, it's so wrong because it's not supposed to be that way. I, I was the canary in the coal mine of my generation. I experienced all of the things pretty much that have become the norm for young people growing up with chronic ailments and illnesses. I didn't know it wasn't normal until I asked my father, you know, when I'm still a child, maybe a teenager at that point where I started to get the cognitive uh, capacity to ask these questions. I said, dad, when you were a kid growing up in far Rockaway, New York, you're, you know, in Brooklyn and everywhere else. Do you remember kids like me? Was everybody sick like me? Were you sick like me for all of your childhood? And it hadn't occurred to him even in that moment until I asked him. And he said, you know, I, I don't recall seeing maybe there was one kid who was the sickly kid of a whole school. Other than that, we would have a cold or a flu maybe. And that was it. We'd be on our merry way in a couple of days like nothing happened. And, uh, you know, for me, that was not my experience. And yet in the span of that, you know, one generation from my father to me, suddenly I was chronically ill. Was this a genetic issue when nothing in the history of the family had that as an element? And yet, as I talked to even his elders or peers, his uncle, well, I say uncle, yeah, uncles as well. My grandparents, his father, mother, and, and, and asked them about while they were still alive, of course, asked them about their childhood, similar circumstances of no, we were not sick. We were not chronically ill. You know, we didn't have any of these things that you have. You, what is that? And then I look at now my children, now 21. So imagine that my son is 21. My daughter's almost 16. And they're the exception to the rule now that you just described, Tracy. They don't have any of those issues that I suffered with chronic ear infections, throat infections, sinus infections, skin rashes, skeletal inflammation, allergies of which every allergy you could have I had. And in one generation, from my dad to me, 
chronically ill, healthy, chronically ill, to my kids, no chronic illness. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that genetically? No, because we changed our diet and our lifestyle before we even had our children. And, you know, my, my wife's story is similar as well. She was chronically abused by medicine and vaccines, et cetera, and, and she suffered chronic illnesses and ailments that were brutal for her as well. So we came together, interestingly enough, and became holistic in, in homeopathic and chiropractic and naturopathic, all of the things that we do, and transformed our health for the better, but uh, still always challenged because of our, ha- our history and how we were raised, and then to give our children a life that we didn't even have in terms of health from the get-go, which mm-hmm. should be the norm. And I'm going to step out and say something. Maybe it'll seem controversial, but, you know, my kids are unvaccinated and they've never been on an antibiotic. They've never had an ear infection. I think maybe one time after Luke went swimming, but he did have water in his ear and didn't tell us. And I think it was just an ache. Uh, But one thing that I noticed between unvaccinated kids, and this is an observation, completely hypothetical because I have kids that are unvaccinated. I notice differences in tone of muscle development. I notice differences in height. Weight seems to be very easy for my kids. They don't gain weight. They're very lean. They're very fit. And I'm not claiming to be better than anybody. These are observations. And I have friends with unvaccinated kids that say the same thing. The other thing is they're not as bothered by bad foods things that I would consider non-food, like, you know, if they eat dairy or ice cream, or it doesn't turn into an issue. Of course, they're not eating it all the time and flaming their systems. But I really think, you know, I always say vaccines are the gateway drug to a chronic pharmaceutical customer. Um, And we used to worry about marijuana, like we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just interesting where we've gone that, you know, in order for us to be healthy, we have to start with injection of disease. And then in order us for us to, you know, maintain our health, we have to eat non-food. So it's such a, it's a really powerful concept that you're talking about today. And I hope people are open-minded enough just to listen. Well, and Tracy, I I concur. I couldn't say a hundred, 110%, maybe, you know, my kids not vaccinated, never once have had an antibiotic and uh, just all the th- same things you identified in your children. And observationally, mm-hmm. as I've traveled around the world, the healthiest children or young people now are the least vaccinated or not vaccinated at all. So, you know, I've, I've uh, argued, as, as you have, that vaccines are the gateway, if you will, drug to a lifelong dependency yeah. on pharmaceuticals. Uh, not because it's a trace element that is necessary for life, but we've been convinced through Flexner Report, educated or indoctrinated doctors, And of course, they've adopted in most of the Western world that religion of modern medicine, not a, let's say, a scientific endeavor that is is fallible and changeable based on new information that we get. It's to be not questioned. In fact, you know, as we see the desperate clinging of the old way, if we can call it the old consciousness, to suppress the speech of those of us who would speak out about our experience here and call out the lies and deceptions of what's happening in the era of, of what I call COVID crazy and the transformation of consciousness that is inevitably accelerating because of this full court press or push or intense uh, right. attempt to squash dissent and censor people, not only those of us who may be more holistically inclined by profession or otherwise, but even folks within the medical church that are fully licensed and degreed in medicine or PhD low that have questions or have commented about things that don't seem to be adding up with the proclamations about what COVID is, what you can say about it, what you can't say about it. So it's bringing more people that maybe never were friendly to us into the fold to recognize that the things we have been pointing out because of our own experience and awakening and consciousness shift are actually correct (laughs) they were always correct even though they were considered conspiratorial in a negative context right conspiracy theories right but uh you know one of my listeners sent me uh this book uh recently (laughs) the robert (laughs) scott bell show i feel like i wrote that book (laughs) yes exactly it's funny it's because it's blank but she says you you fill it out and i said why don't you fill it out for me but um you know we joke about it every day it's like more and more times that the WHO changes its idea of what COVID is and pointing out that, hey, I happened to point that out almost a year ago. 
uh, and mm-hmm. they're going, oh, now, now they agree. Fauci even, as we've seen flip-flopped, and of course lied about things. Uh, so when we talk about consciousness shift, it often happens in dire circumstances, in times of uh, discomfort, extraordinary discomfort. And if, and if anything, we can describe the last year has been very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. The uh, isolation, the separation, the threat of a new virus that they claim could just kill everybody you know, randomly just because you breathe on them. These things are, you know, although they are, I think, designed by, I think, you know, Luciferians, I'd call it, to divide us and have us live in a permanent state of fear so that we can be controlled by them or do things that we know are not of God. But on another level, they're also there, I think, of God to teach us what is not right, what is deceit and and lies. So in order to experience, you know, that desire even for God, we have to experience what is not God. And, And so... I look at that and I go, all right, I have to step back from wanting to just be so angry at the folks that are participating in this mess and mm-hmm. recognize they're all playing a role. And it is what facilitated me years ago to wake up the uncomfortableness of fear and the fear that it was imposed or, or dictated to me by those also in fear or ignorant of how health actually happens. So mm-hmm. as I say, I don't say doctors are conscious about participating in a luciferian agenda i think they believe by and large what they're promoting although many of them are wholly and totally ignorant and don't even investigate for instance the mrna quote-unquote vaccines that are not vaccines Mm -hmm. on the study designs that brought them to an emergency use authorization that don't do any of the things that are claimed that they do they haven't even studied to to, to find out if they can do those things so (laughs) i'm embarrassed often for doctors and, and learned people and degreed medical professionals and phds when they don't do the basic research that you do and that I do and bring out to the public so that we can make full, better informed or fully informed decisions about what we want to put in or not put into our bodies, for instance. Mm-hmm. And anything that has a risk should have a choice. And, you know, I've learned a lot from Dr. Sherry Tenpenny and Judy Mikovits. Uh, she was on yesterday just going through the pathways of you know, vaccine detox and the activation of retroviruses and all the secondary issues that not only do current vaccine schedules cause, but uh, this next one coming up, this mRNA. And, you know, this, uh, I look at all of it and it's like everything that you just said regarding, you know, making us uncomfortable. That's usually, you know, God saying, hey, these things are to be set apart. You're not to be, you know, you can be of the world, but don't be in the world. You know, you don't have to participate. but, but the interesting thing I was, I was going along the other day and I always laugh. I said, nobody confronts me about a mask. Like it just doesn't happen. Like I walk into a store or wherever, and I guess, I guess nobody wants to deal with my, my resting, um, not so nice face, but they don't bother me. And, you know, maybe, maybe they just don't want the confrontation. I've, I've never been approached. And I, I think that's interesting because, um, I don't know what that is that other people are targeted you know, because I have a friend everywhere she goes, she's targeted. So, and I don't think it's really the fact that they're scared, you know, because six feet, a mask, we know that that's just, it's not even science. I don't even know where it came from, but it's more of disobeying. People look at you as, you know, and then they try to change that consciousness and say, well, you don't love your neighbor if you don't wear a mask. And I hear church leaders say this. I hear church leaders advocating for vaccination. And it astounds me because they have taken such a drastic position of fear over faith. And when you can't even rely on the church anymore, on your faith, where you go, your community of believers anymore. Mm. Yeah. You know, I know that the whole world seems to have forgotten God is sovereign, but he hasn't. So it just, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, And I think, you know, one of the things you bring up regarding the church, I've spoken out about that. I do almost every day on the show. And whether it's, uh, I, you know, I don't care what proclamation of faith somebody's claims they have, you know, watch how they behave. And I know more about them than what they say. Uh, And so these so-called church leaders are disappointing. They're disappointing to me. uh, And uh, yet they're also serving a role, I believe. And that is what is our ultimate, let's say, message that I've come to the conclusion is like god saying you got to have a direct relationship with me and that may or may not rely upon an outer church organization and i know for some that's controversial to say but i'm like your faith is you know well tested beyond the building 
you know, where you might go to worship once a week or twice a week. It's to be at every moment present with God, with spirit. And so I think that these things, when we have when, when we have these moments of disillusionment, even with our own uh, churches, synagogues, whatever, uh, it isn't to weaken our faith. I think it's to strengthen it and to be a living example for those who have strayed because of fear. We don't have to beat them up. As I said, we can be angry and disappointed, and that's a human emotion, but ultimately recognize, you know, the journey they're on is their journey, and we can only be there for them when they're ready to open back up to the love, the divine, you know, their own divinity, if you will. So our relationship has to be strengthened and recognize that it doesn't rely necessarily on attending or being in a church, which I recommend people do because there's a strengthening about coming together in community and worship. So I I believe we need to come together that way. And if we can't, another thing that I've been talking about and others have, maybe you've heard about Pam Popper talking about every Thursday, people should be getting together, invite them into your home, not even Mm -hmm. having an agenda just to remember what it's like to have human to human interaction, to not be afraid of one another. And the, the miracles that occur just in, and transformations of consciousness happen just because we interact in that way and, uh, and let the fear subside and, and dissipate. But once again, that discomfort can drive us. You know, I, I think, and I've said this before, I recognize that I look back on my past and my suffering as a young man, as a child of all the ailments. And listen, we can look around to people that do suffer tremendously and say, why would God let, you know, good people, what our perception of suffer? And that's, that was a question. It's a big question in the Jewish faith, you know? Uh, right. and, and, I, and I realized that God loves me enough to allow me to suffer enough to find out how valuable the relationship with God is. Mm-hmm. That I wouldn't know it if, if I was beaten into submission the moment I, I strayed and never given the opportunity to have the freedom to choose God or spirit, as opposed to being beaten into submission, which is not choice. It's like force, right? Like government charity. That's not charity. That's mm-hmm. theft. And then, re, you know, it's like charity comes from the heart. It doesn't expect reward. It's just doing because it is a gift that you have to give. And, right. and so the choice of coming together, coming back. This idea of the chosen people is because you choose to be or you choose God in that sense, wherever you are. And it's not limited to one definition of, you know, what path or religious path you're on. Again, these may be considered controversial, but I don't mean them in that context. I say, you know, if you are created as an individual divine spark of the divine of God, then could you not have a direct relationship? Should you not? (laughs) And anything that dissuades you from that, we could argue, oh, that's evil the same time maybe it's by design to give us the opportunity to make a choice a conscious choice right you know, and uh, i agree i mean you know it's hebrews 12 11, right no discipline seems pleasant at the time but painful and later on however produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained up by it so if you recognize it for what it is and you understand what's happening then you can kind of step out of the emotional connection to all the hate and fear and you know, all, all the things that we want to, like you said, lash out at people that don't see it, but they're on their own journey too. So, you know, this transformation, however, has become so big and the COVID uh, illusion has become so big. And it just astounds me how fast it was. It was so fast and it was kind of like you just didn't see it coming. And then all of a sudden everybody was participating. Yeah, well, I'd say 150 plus years in the making with the germ theory that set the stage for this because we have been dissuaded from, you know, maybe the religion or our ancestry or our youth and, uh, you know, the faith in God and, and, and man and his arrogance started convincing even people of faith that, well, medical man knows more, right? And you just follow what we say and you can be on this righteous path of health and safety, right? These infectious organisms, these evil little invisible microbes you have to be afraid of. And of course, we can talk from, you know, religious or spiritual perspective or even medical perspective and, and, and see, I believe, very, very easily through this fear, because just the simple act of recognition that in this physical temple that we've been given to permission to use for a while, we're here. We're more microbe, if you will. It's more microbe than it is mammalian as far as cellular, uh, uh, you know, quantitatively speaking. There are more right. microbes gut in our gut, for instance, that we have cells in our body. And so we then would conclude, if we use logic, which has seemed to be lost on many, we then, for, well, this is basic, well, okay, if we're more microbes in us than cells, it's like, 
how is it possible that the germ theory is correct in saying that germs are the cause of disease? Because wouldn't there be no explanation right. for life itself if we're more germ than, you know, again, we come to those conclusions and we say, my gosh, if the germ theory were accurate, no one would be alive to discover it, much less promote it. And, and that's, that fear has been embedded almost into our DNA, our consciousness over now many generations. And as I said, we've adopted primarily in the West, but around the world, the false religion, the false teaching. And we call it, my, my friend John Rappaport, an investigative journalist, coined the phrase Church of Biological Mysticism. And I just kind of modified it to say Church of Pharmaceutical Mysticism. And the priestcraft mm-hmm. in the church, of course, are the doctors, the white lab coating, where, where, whatever. And, of course, now we see our own uh, religious leaders adopt, even as they preach on Sunday or Saturday or whenever, they adopted this church and again promoting the the sacrament in that church vaccination yeah. for all there I and mean, it's like wow how deceived are we and and i have to be humbled by the the fact that at any moment i could be deceived and i need to remember that because i was deceived i had to wake yeah. up to recognize this and if i get cocky i could fall back into it so i always <laughs> want to remember what it was like and occasionally i, I you know i'm on the air with my my, my producer super i was like super mate please re- don't ever let me forget that i was there too you know as we uh-huh. talk about people who are ignorant or even arrogant right maybe i was there too and I, I must remember that so that i don't fall prey to you know that uh the end of the devil's advocate uh which was a movie that with i think uh was it Keanu reeves and al pacino mm-hmm. pacino Good played movie. the devil yeah. yeah and he and he overcame so much the Keanu reeves character at, at the end you know, the devil appears again and, and kind of plays to his, you know, sense of self-worth and ego. And, and then, in, in, you know, it's like he, he says, I'm, I've got him again. Vanity, you know, it'll always right. get in the end. And so, I, you know, I have fun with the vanity issue because, you know, we talk about how many times I was right, you know. <laughs> I, I think about another talk show host like Rush Limbaugh, you know, who was, uh, you know, talent on loan from God. I mean, it was a brilliant thing to say. And, and yet. In reality, the people that knew him talked about he was very humble and he served in his way to communicate. And, and I know that's, you know, controversial for those that lean a certain way politically. But I said, please get beyond that and recognize soul comes here with a mission and a purpose. And he found his. And I hope that everyone here finds theirs if they haven't already. I think I know some of mine. There may be more to uncover, Tracy, but my journey into health and healing from not having it from the get go has led me to do what I do, you know, 22nd year now in broadcast healing and lecturing around the world when we could travel easier. Maybe that'll come back again to bring that empowering message that the power to heal Mm -hmm. is yours, it's theirs, it's mine. But what does it mean? I think the true role of a doctor, if I come to that full-on consciousness shift, is not to heal me or you, but it's to reconnect or it's to help me or help you reconnect with the source of all healing. Right. What is that? A great God, physician. spirit. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. And so that's kind of weird. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, you're talking doctors. They have to be, you know, open to God and spirit. Absolutely. I don't particularly want to see. I, you could be a proficient, you know, mechanically at something. And if it happens to be my body or my kid's body, I want you to know that you are a person of faith and that you live and you pray and that you have that communication open for guidance because there could be guidance that is not ever taught in any medical school, even a right. surgeon. Will suddenly get a message from God to go. Don't do that. You're trained. No, that will that will kill the pain. So that's what I'm talking about here. This consciousness to bring back spirit into every area of our lives, however mechanically oriented it may be. Mm-hmm. That spirit flows there to it. It must flow there. So we are guided at the moments where everything we thought we knew can be reversed in a moment to save your life or save someone's life mm-hmm. in a, in a healing uh, healing way. No, I love that. And it's, it's so funny because I think it's it's one of those things where God tells everybody, right? He doesn't just tell one person, not anymore anyway. But I got this book from a friend, Dr. Len Bransowitz, Dr. David Jeremiah. It's called Forward. And it's really about, um, you know, kind of finding your dream and not a dream for yourself, but something that God has pressed upon your whole life, right? And then he has action steps on how to attain it. And it's, it's not anything other than like great leadership skills, being brave, you know, relying on God and not walking in fear. I mean, but he has, it's just laid out very well. And this morning I woke up and I was like, you know, maybe, maybe on both sides, there's legalism, right? So medical and natural, um, you know, you look at charismatic church versus something like, um, you know, uh, 
apologist, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, religion is legalism. So there's legalism on each side. And I think when people get to that point of legalism, they forget their journey to get there. They forget that at one time they may have been like me who wasn't saved at all. Right. It was very new age and did all those things. And then I'm over here and I try not to be legalistic knowing what I know. As a child, I was very overweight uh, up until I was in college. And, you know, people look at me now and say, oh, she's so healthy. She does everything right. Untrue. I, I know my journey, how I got here. And I think those experiences are the equipping. And the same thing happens in the medical and the natural, that there's such a segregation that we cannot play in each other's field. We cannot communicate and have a healthy, respectful relationship because just like you said in that book, I'm right and you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the, the big things is that they start you out in, in school with debate teams. This is a point and this is a point, which one's right? Neither. It, the application of the point is how it pl applies to each individual's life. You know, I can't say that my son will go to college and it'll be beneficial to him, or he may go to a trade school and that'll be better. But what do they tell you? You have to go to college, you gotta get an education, right? There's so much legalism in our way and we have to learn to understand that the application of that is relative to each person. So a vaccine may not be good for my family, considering my kids came from genetics of Alzheimer's, ALS, a lot of brain issues. Um, you know, they had chronic disease on both sides. And instinctively, before I knew anything, I was like, I don't think I should vaccinate my kid. So 11 years ago, I'm on the CDC website looking around and there was actually a statement at that time. It said, if any of these issues persist neurologically in your family history, vaccinations can be a contraindicated. And so I chose no. And then I started following Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, right? When I was overweight, I thought, oh, I'll just exercise like a fiend and, and eat all these healthy foods and cut my calories. Well, science has evolved and now we know that's not really the way that decreasing nutritional intake is not a sustainable way to lose weight and in fact causes more detriment. Exercising to the point of adrenal fatigue is not the way and in fact causes more detriment. So the interesting thing is that science has evolved, theories have evolved, all of these things have evolved except for the powers that be. They're still stuck in this 50, 60 years ago of nutrient recommendations, vaccines good for everybody. Like it's been, it's been pretty, uh, the, the legalism is very much there. And the segregation is, is where, where I see the issue is that we all have to be right. And, you know, I, I really don't think that medical doctors today are, are trying to hurt people. I don't think that they don't have the same goal as you and I, I just think they don't have the open mind. Well, mechanistic molecular reductionism uh, <laughs> is very limiting because it, it, it's devoid of spirit once again. And I, I said modern medicine didn't go wrong because it's, you know, focused on the physical body, especially when it comes to emergency trauma, life saving interventions, battlefield type medicine. It went wrong when it abandoned the spirit and the mind, of course, you know, even though they acknowledge and pay lip service to it, but it's not embedded in their culture. It was, you know, made basically um you talk about new age concepts or misunderstanding of what new age is. I mean, really, I think it's just a, a kind of a, a misunderstanding or maybe misapplication of the things that spirit can do. You know, it's using different language. But in terms of the health, you know, mind, body, spirit, when people started saying mind and spirit, they thought, oh, that's a new age. Concept. That's not a new age. That's as ancient as the teachings <laughs> that we've always been given. Well, that was the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, you know, it's altered, it's twisted. I mean, it's manipulated. And part of it is control and sending people down different paths. But as I said, that freedom that I was granted by God to explore those things was so that I would eventually make a choice to choose the, the path as opposed to being coerced and deceived or forced, which is no longer choice in that way. So it, it, this is where I, I will, you know, draw the line as much as, um, uh, I am. I try to be as compassionate as I can for people that aren't awake on this thing. When they violate my freedom to choose, my choice, that's where that that's the line of you know what? Now you've crossed the line, and I have an, a right and an obligation to defend my life and my children's lives. And that's where it can get pretty sticky because you're like, I, I'm not promoting violence, but if you're going to attack me or my perception is, you know, what you come at me with a syringe that could potentially kill me. I mean, you know, every day we're hearing new stories of people that get the mRNA injection and 
you know, uh, just today I just learned of a, a 39 year old single mom in Ogden, Utah, four days after getting the shot, apparently no pre preexisting issues. And she dies suddenly four days after it. It's like, what, what do you, what do you do with that? And you say, you want to force that mm -hmm. you want to limit my freedom to move about the earth cabin, the American cabin, unless I get that or my children get that, that is, you know, that's where we have to also stand up and be righteous warriors, not because we, in, we want to engage in violence, but to recognize that if we don't put a stop to it. And, and part of it, Tracy, is what you said earlier about being able to walk through life or into a store. You're not wearing a mask and no one's confronting you. Why? Mm -hmm. it's, it's consciousness. It's intent mm -hmm. as well. It's like a recognition that you have an energy about you that nobody can penetrate because you're exuding that health. And I don't just mean physical health but spiritual health. You walk with God, you walk with spirit. It's like, of course, this is not going to be an issue. And those who are confronted all of the time, and again, this is not a criticism. I'm not saying they're worse than any, but it's just part of the right. learning process. Haven't achieved that level where they're wearing that cloak of consciousness. It's not a deceitful cloak. It's a cloak of, uh, of, of God's love and, and, and protection. And, and mm -hmm. we have access to that at any moment, but it takes practice to be able to walk that way outside of the, you know, maybe hour or two you used to go to church or, you know, whatever is going on. Right. Or, you know, oh, I feel, I feel in that, I'm in that cloak, right. And you leave and suddenly it's gone. That's right. never been the message. I know some have altered the message to make you believe that, but as we're seeing the fallibility of these institutions and the people running them, we've got to recognize that our connection is deep and it's within and it's available to any of us because we are all children of that creation of God. So, this consciousness transformation is happening, I believe, because of the discomfort, as I pointed out, illnesses, ailments, fear, even directing us perhaps to be so uncomfortable that we're willing to look at something that is the unknown that we normally fear only to the extent that we're ha we're OK with our discomfort. Right. Mm -hmm. We're familiar with it enough where it's like, eh, you know, I'm going to hang out here <laughs> until you're OK. Now it's so uncomfortable. I'm willing to move now. I think the most amazing shift in consciousness is not having to be comfortable with being uncomfortable to say, you know what? I'm willing to leap at a moment's notice into the unknown, into the abyss because God's got me. And I'm not talking about, uh, you know, irresponsible behavior of like, you've right. got a dark alley that you know that there are, are drug dealers. <laughs> you're just going to run and down there. And you're, uh, just to say, just to prove it. It's like, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. But the yeah, God says listen, not to test them. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it's to listen to the voice of spirit. Like, you know, if you're being directed to go into an area, it's like, I, I'm not comfortable doing that. I don't, I, but you'll know you'll have the words or the whatever it is because you have faith because that faith has been, I uh, probably tested before then, but also how many times does God have to show you that he's got your back before mm -hmm. you go, okay, I got it. I, I don't have to doubt anymore. And, right. I, and I realized that that's a difficult one because wh while we're here in this body, we're vulnerable, mm -hmm. right? We're vulnerable. And I, I, I got to acknowledge my shortcomings where I, I do my level best to, to, to be better than that. But at any moment, also, I don't want to destroy myself. And some people get on themselves so badly that every time they, oh man, I wasn't a faithful servant in that moment. I'm condemned. That's not what God does because we are, you know, and so right. it's, it's, boy, it's, isn't it a, well, I think people look at what you're saying, right, and say, okay, well, I have to have discernment. I have to make sure that what I'm doing is good and not bad. Mm -hmm. And what I always say is you got to do what is God, you know, because you can do lots of good things in life. That may not be what he's calling you to. The other thing is to actually do what he says when he asks you to do. So I don't know if you know the story of Sherry and I, Tenpenny. Mm -hmm. We actually you know, spoke together on a stage for Nutritional Frontiers. And afterwards, she asked me to go to a spa with her. And she's told this story a couple of times. And, you know, I, I was like, I, and at the time I was like, man, that's really expensive. You know, my, my husband wasn't working at the time. And I'm like, I don't know if I could afford it, but I just had this pressing, like God was like, go, you have to go and I'll take care of you. So I went and it ended up that we were talking the first night and she was telling me about all the trials and tribulations of her life and how those things deviated her from God. And that she was seeking other like spiritual influences. And in that moment, I was like, that wasn't God. That was the enemy. And it was part of your equipping. Like God's calling you back and you've asked him, here I am. You know, I was like, and I'm telling you. And from that point, she said, 
<laughs> she drove home in the longest four hours of her life, just thinking over everything that I had said. And she was really angry at me at the time for like praying with her and, and talk. Sorry, my dogs just parked. And, and talking to her about God. And long story short, it, it moved her entire practice and podcast and everything that she's doing towards Christ so much so that she does a happy hour. That's a scripture reading. And it wasn't me, but it was me walking in what I was supposed to do. That was hard because she was like a hero of mine. And I thought, are you kidding me? You want me to go say this to Sherry Tenpenny? Like, are you crazy? So that's some of the things that we have to remember that sometimes it looks crazy to the world, but it looks like obedience to God, right? And we have to get out of our comfort zone in order to follow him. Yeah, the question is, are you willing to be a fool for God? Right? God, you want me to do what? That's great. You know, and our ego gets in the way. No, I can't do it. It's like until you, you do it and you find out the miracles that occur, and you're like, my gosh, why would I ever, why would I ever question that? Now, again, discernment, you bring up that point or rightful discrimination. We're not saying abandon that, uh, but I don't believe we are asked to, to harm one another. And I think there are certain litmus, uh, you know, defensive life. That's something, but Correct. Uh, to harm, purposefully harm one another. So, yeah, it's a beautiful story about how you were guided in that. And, and in that story, you also talk about your own little journey of like, well, can I do this now? I can't really afford it. But you're getting the nudge from spirit. No, no, no. This is right. very important and go. And so despite certain things that you might say are logical to not go, because I'm looking at my bank account, it doesn't make sense. Right. And I talk about being called to heal and then hear the message that in order to heal, you have to love yourself enough to put the best stuff in your body. That is, you know, the equivalent of what we call organic food, for instance. And when I made that decision, I was not far out of college. I wasn't making a lot of money and it was a way more expensive back then and less available uh, all those years ago. And I made the leap. They have then, it easy uh, today, don't they, Robert? They have oh it. Oh my so gosh! It, it's like it's right there. <laughs> and I don't know how long that's going to last. I, you know, I'm, my, part of my message is also that we need to bring that uh, food home, and I don't mean from the grocery store by growing it more and more, uh, and rely less and less on the mir the miracle of diesel trucks miraculously yes. bringing things in. They appear, uh, but the the idea of affordability is on everybody's mind now economics mm -hmm. on everybody's mind and the question is uh do i have enough can i do it? you know and that's a question of spiritual abundance that manifests in many different ways and it's also a, 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 an aspect of uh self-worth valuing yourself as god values you do you love yourself enough as god loves you to allow yourself to receive the gifts even though you say oh, i can't afford it which i can't afford it maybe a bank account reality but it's also a, a, a kind of a, a failing for any of us on the worthiness scale because it's an excuse that says, I will not accept the gifts of God because I'm just going to reject it outright because of what I see or don't see in a bank account or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. As opposed to saying, look, Lord, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I get the message that I ought to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the leap. And eventually you'll find out that as you learn the language, uh, you're always going to be caught if you will, you know, and I mean, you're falling, you feel like, oh, am I going to, no, you're not abandoned. It's, it's right. we who abandon, right? It's not a God that abandons us. So in all of this, and again, it's, it's quite a, I love this discussion, Tracy, you know, every time we get together, uh, <laughs> we get to talk about some really cool things. And some people say, well, I want to learn more about homeopathy. I want to find, I do that on the show. It's a mix of a little of everything. Yeah. But I think, you know, with this topic of consciousness transformation in the era of COVID, and what we're confronted with, I think, you know, it's a concentration of things I've experienced in my life that brought me to an awakened, if I will say state to at least be aware of the healing that is available mm -hmm. to us all. Uh, but it's always about, how would you say practice, constant practice of the presence of God in our lives. And, you know, whether it be like, you know, fasting once a week or however long you can do it things that can kind of bring the consciousness and direction, the focus to an area where you begin instead of once a week, it becomes once a day. Instead of once a day, it's once an hour. Instead of once an hour, it's every minute. And, and it's a wow to try and look at life spiritually at everything at every, at every moment. I know it's a lot to ask and I don't say I've achieved it, but it's a worthwhile goal. And if healing or the lack of health has driven you to this uh, path, um, my goodness, it's what it takes. It's what it took. Mm -hmm. If it took the, the two by four. And as I said, 
uh, the why me, O oh Lord, which I had as a child and a teenager became thank you, God, for allowing me to suffer the way I did so that I would learn indelibly the things that I would come to realize are as important as anything, even as breathing is to me today. As yeah, why and I, breathing I'm should here. be important, huh? No, and I, I love that. Um, I want to go back on the point that you made about, you know, abundance. Like, it, it's not always in money. And I think we confuse that, that people think, like, when I looked at my bank account, right, I, I couldn't be looking for money. I was looking for provision. And God will provide provision when you follow what he wants you to do. And so that's a big point that people have to realize that in a time such as this, you have to start looking for his provisions, not financial only, but how is he equipping you, building you, educating you, putting you with people that are knowledgeable, keeping you safe. Uh, if it's financial, that's wonderful, but that's not the end all. It's kind of like, I look at it like weight loss, right? Everybody would come in and be like, I want to lose this many pounds. And I'd be like, oh, well, do you know what your fasting blood sugar is? Do you know what your blood pressure is? What's your resting heart rate? What's your BMI? What's your lean muscle mass? What's your, you know, and they would be like, oh, well, I didn't look at those numbers, right? They just look at the number on the scale. And right. one number doesn't equate health just as money doesn't equate God's provision in your life. And so this whole equipping that we're seeing going on on the earth, it's not just for people who believe, but for the unbelievers, for the people that are sinning, for the people that are scared. I mean, Jesus didn't come for you and I, he came for the sinner, right? He came for the unbeliever. And the difference of then and now is that then they believed in something. The whole world believed in something. They believed in a God, even if it wasn't the God. Today, people don't. They believe in man. They believe in the religion of vaccination. They believe in you know their comfort. They believe in their flesh, what they feel, what they see, what they hear. That's what they believe. And it's that's the transformation that I've seen is that we've come so far from believing in a higher power, right? God, yeah. that there's nothing left to believe in. So I, mean, I, be I, I believe that uh, in the midst of the cacophony, the noise, the confusion, the distraction, if we choose, you know, a path of a God, you know, of spirit, that's extraordinary because it, it's, it's, it's easier when you're in the foxhole, so to speak, as they say, with the bombs going off, you know, to suddenly find prayer in God, right? But when things are going well in your life, and we, Tracy, in our lifetime have, have lived a rather easy life. And again, I recognize we all have challenges, emotional, other things in our life, but we didn't want most of us for food or shelter, or clothing even, most of our right. life. We might not have had the best stuff as we perceived, it, but for the most part, carefree. I think about our life growing up in the 70s, the 80s, and thinking about what was the care in the world that we had, you know, just not mm -hmm. getting in too much trouble if we came home late to, you know for supper we didn't have a right? dvr that was the biggest right? thing we were out playing and it's like it's amazing to think of that and and i look at what's happening now and perhaps it's because uh folks didn't you know choose in the good times you know mm -hmm. that path and so we're challenged now we look at the change the transformation the movement away through fear the division among people and in those times maybe it's more likely people will come back to spirit because mm -hmm. it takes what it takes. Now, in the midst of this, even if there's an economic downturn of some kind, there are people that live abundant lives, whether it be considered monetarily right. or not. I'm looking more spiritually abundant lives in any of those times, in the good times and the bad times, because it's consistent, the recognition of who they are, you know, in the eyes of God and their relationship to the most divine. And yet it takes what it takes for each of, of us. It took what it took for me to yep. find how important, you know, this path was and is. And yet for some, it's going to take a bit of suffering. We see transformation in the outer world of the, the fear mongering, if you will, to finally come back and go, oh, what's really important in my life? The opportunities abound for spiritual growth and consciousness shift in every age and time. There is just seemingly... Uh, if we will, a collective consciousness, and I'm not a collectivist, but I mean, in the concept of similar experiences or similar sufferings that we go through. And there are times where people wake up a lot similar times. Now, it only happens individually, but that individual impacts just like when we come together in each other's homes. 
Right. Suddenly someone that had a feeling wasn't sure about that feeling sees you you're not afraid. And suddenly they're suddenly taking off their mask and going, oh, it wasn't just me. And so it's a it's a nice outer confirmation that we are given a an, a, an opportunity and a gift to com to commune, to connect with one another. And Normally that happens a say, lot, don't you feel? You can walk into a store without a mask and all of a sudden everyone's taking their mask off because yes, I walked in correct. without a mask. Right. Or if you speak out at something and all of a sudden you get the me too stories, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That happened to me too. Um, so there is, there is communion, right? The community that you yes. build in similar situations, which is very powerful. Me stories you serve are always as a, the most a, a conduit of God's love and God's strength. When you live in that consciousness, right. right? And as I said, it's not limited or unique to this time throughout history. It's been written about. We've got stories. And oftentimes we think about things that happened thousands of years ago. Oh, that only happened then. It's like, how, that was not what was being taught. You know, it was about the miracles at any, any moment that you're alive in here that are possible right. and inevitable because you live a certain way according to the laws. And, uh, and I say, what's happening now is just what happens every once in a while when we have strayed too far, <laughs> the balance has to come back and, and whatever has to happen. Some would say it karmically, you know, whatever, cause and effect as it relates. And, and this is part of the learning process, the growth process, the transformation of consciousness. And I say we are loved enough to be allowed to suffer so that we will wake up and choose differently, not mm -hmm. because of force and violence, but because we desire it of our own accord. Deep within us, we long to go back home to our point of true origin, right? which is, you know, not in government or medicine or, or even a, the four walls of a church, or it could be, but look, divine inspiration could happen within four walls of any building or out in nature. I mean, there's not a limit to where God can reach us. Right. That's a, our mind that would limit it and say only here can that happen. It's like, well, mm -hmm. it's, it's fine to put those symbols and in, 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 that have meaning to us. But if we make that the only way, then we're limiting God's flow, not God. It's mm -hmm. our choice. Yep. And, you know, he's he's everywhere. Like I said, he's still sovereign, even if people have forgot. So, well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. And I would like to ask you to leave us with, you know, just some summary points, words of inspiration, like help people take that step. Well, I, I recognize and I know as you, Tracy, that we are born of creation, that creation created by creator, God, however, and I know people have different names for it, different beliefs and you know, I have to walk a delicate line, recognizing I have people of all faiths that come to my show and I'm welcome because that was to me the, the call from God. It's like you're not to limit the healing that I'm teaching you about to one belief system. It has to be given freely to anybody who's ready to hear it. And so that's an important message of compassion, tolerance and love and and, and you know, recognizing that each path is unique, even within a given claimed religion. Everybody's path within that belief system is going to be unique and different and very personal. And to remind, remind myself has, has been a big part of my life uh, of having that openness of the heart and the compassion for folks that have their own path to live and lead and yet to be there for them when they're ready, not to beat them into submission because I've been the recipient of that growing up as well. So I'm very sensitive to that, but I do ask people to go in to prayerful contemplation or meditation on a daily basis to practice the presence of spirit at any moment, however they find it. And it, it, it may come in different ways. I, like I said, God is not limited in his ability to communicate with us. We're limited in our willingness to accept it in certain packages or ways. Right. And I had to be beaten down to be opened up to look and say, my gosh, it's unlimited the way that I could be reached the way I could be healed or the way I could help someone else to meet them where they are to hopefully inspire them to open up to the reality that the healer is not the doctor of any kind but the reconnection to the source of all healing. And so however you get there is how you get there. Tracy, you have brilliant, wonderful experiences that are inspiring to me and others. And I hope that I would have those for others as well. But it isn't for me to say, this is the way you have to do it. I'm hoping that people are open to be inspired, to be guided to the way they need to do it, to mm -hmm. achieve that healing and that transformation that I believe this is why the COVID crazy is happening. <laughs> to help us achieve that. There's a good part of that as much as I'm not a fan of all the crazy fear stuff, but it's giving us an opportunity to reach folks that weren't reachable before. So I'm grateful for that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And how can people reach out and hear more of you? Well, just come on over to robertscottbell.com, even though we've been banned on YouTube and other platforms, probably. <laughs> uh, we've done an end around, and now we have direct broadcast capacity to that website. And of course, archives everywhere. Uh, sign up for email alerts, and then we'll give you, you know, insight. And, and you know, ultimately what I'm trying to do is bring the power to heal back to you where it belongs. I'm not giving it to you. I don't have it to give to you. I mean, it's like you right. have it. And it's just like getting out of our own way and allowing it to flow through us is the message. And I'm just grateful every day I can wake up and breathe freely without a mask and uh, bring that recognition or that reminder to myself as well. That's where it starts. Right. And to anyone else who wants to plug in. And Tracy, I so appreciate you and your passion and your great uh, experiences that you're willing to share and, and your uh, uh, you know leadership, not in a way that you're looking for followers, but in a way that you're looking to inspire people to, to have that connection as well. And I'm so thankful to you. And Thank to you. Winer Wellness for giving us this opportunity to communicate and share in this, uh, you know, informal discussion. And hopefully it's impacted people in an empowering way as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Robert. It's always a pleasure. And we're just so grateful for everything that you're doing. So I'll be praying for you. God bless. And up next is going to be Michelle Kunzelman. She's a naturopathic daughter. Doctor, so you're also a daughter, Michelle, of the Lord. <laughs> She's on. I can see her. But uh, she actually was... Uh, hospitalized and put on a ventilator and she's now tell us about her journey through COVID on the other side of the vent. So thank you, Robert. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Tracy. All right, guys, stay tuned. Cause we're going to be live in about four minutes with Michelle Kunzelman ND. She's going to be telling us about her journey through COVID life after a ventilator. It's going to be amazing. I know her personally, she's a wonderful person and uh, just an amazing woman of God. So stay tuned guys.
Okay, we are back and you are in for an incredible story. With me today is Michelle Kunselman. She is a naturopathic doctor, a certified healthcare professional. She's one of my best friends, a credible woman of God. And she is gonna share her story with us today about going through life after COVID. So Michelle, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. I know that you have an amazing story, so I'm just gonna let you introduce yourself and then take it away. Are you muted or unmuted? <laughs> there you go. Tracy, it helps. Hey. <laughs> Tracy, it's so good to be here with you today. And I'm excited to be able to share really the story of uh, who God has been to me through the last few months. Um, back in uh, October, end of October, I woke up a little more tired than usual. Um, I had been working a lot and under a lot of pressure and stress. <clears throat> and I woke up a little more tired than usual and didn't think a whole lot of it. And I went through the next couple of days feeling incredible fatigue until finally I decided maybe I should take, take my temperature and see where I'm at. And at that point I was at 102 uh, with 102 fever and um, my breathing started to shift rapidly. And uh, all of a sudden I ended up in a pretty precarious situation with my health. But as we get started today, I just want to um, encourage any of you who are struggling with the fear um, that is associated with um, COVID to remember that um, God is here with us in the battle of COVID. He is with us and able to walk us through whatever that looks like. And I want to walk through uh, a lot of the beauty of walking through suffering, even through something as difficult as being on a ventilator for two weeks. Um, but I also want to explain a little bit about uh, what it looked like from the perspective of an ND, walking through the medical model that was present uh, with the, um, the purpose of saying that they were trying to help me, which I, I want to say first that I'm thankful for the doctors that I got to come in contact with. I know that their heart was to minister to me with the skills that they had, um, that they often had their hands tied about, tied behind their back in the process. And I am more than grateful for the experience I had to walk through COVID and be able to come in contact with and rub shoulders with a lot of these uh, doctors and nurses and other practitioners that were part of my care. I wanna start with this verse right here. My grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of God may rest upon me. And I think what is so important to remember as we face the COVID craziness all around us is that being sick is not the end and it can be the beginning. And for me, it has been uh, the continuation of seeing the power of God when, when I am at my weakest place. And so often we want to come to God at our strong places and he says, no, your weakness is where I can work and be most powerful. When I was a little girl, I had a lot of lung issues. Um, I had really terrible asthma that affected every day of my life uh, until I was in my early 20s, just walk, walking, running across a gym floor or running around a building or uh, any kind of physical activity was um, work for me. And nobody knew anything about the effect of food or food allergies or environmental effects, uh, things that were affecting me environmentally in my home that could be contributing to my health. And so I was under the care of the allopathic model of just trying to manage my symptoms, which was really something that never really truly happened in order for me to truly live. I was alive as a little girl, but I didn't really get to truly live until um, my early 20s. Um, when I was 22, someone uh, at my brand new first job out of college 
uh, was watching me struggle with my health with pneumonia for probably the second or third time that year. And they said, go see a naturopath. <clears throat> and I was like, what the heck is that? I had no understanding of what they did. I drove up to the house of this uh, lady and uh, she came outside with her slightly orange tinted, tinted hair from, I think, drinking a lot of carrot juice is what I discovered as I got to know her a little bit better. And I walked inside and she gave me, she heard my story, gave me a few suggestions. I walked away and within a few weeks, I was off of all of my medication. And for the first time, I was able to run. And I remember the first time I ran I had been walking up to that point to try to get my body moving. And I remember the first time I was like, I wonder if I can run. And I ran around that building um, that I was working for a college teaching at the time. And I ran around and I cried in a celebration that I could run. And I was so thrilled. Um, that was kind of the beginning of my um, understanding of natural wellness and the gifts that God has given us in creation. Over the next couple of years, I watched my mom battle and die from uh, cancer, <clears throat> and I kept asking the question, why are they not building her body? Why are they not giving her tools to help her to be strong? Because I knew the ice cream that she was eating every day to settle her stomach uh, was not helping her to live. And so I would ask the doctors and I would ask the nurses, what she can, can she do with her food? What can we do with nutrients? And they would say, just let her eat whatever she wants. And I just watched that process. And I said goodbye to my mom in 2007. And uh, a couple years later, ended up with Lyme's disease. And that really was a battle that brought me to the place where I decided to go back to school and learn more about the beautiful creation that God has made in us and the reflection of his image that is seen through every structure in our body, through every vein, through every process that our body experiences day to day. And so after learning, I thought, well, you know what, maybe I'll do some consults. And I thought, oh, I'll see a couple of people a day um, or a couple of people a month, really. And uh, pretty soon my practice was going very strong and very fast and my focus turned into helping others and the reality was is I hadn't gained my health back myself and so I went into full tilt practice serving and helping others until that day in October when I woke up not feeling well at all and um, when I woke up from the ventilator I was sitting in the um, stepped out actually a few days after coming off the ventilator, which was a miracle in and of itself. I had been on a ventilator for uh, two weeks. And at that point, the prognosis for me coming off of the ventilator was really grim. Um, I was, they thought that I would need oxygen for the rest of my life if I did survive it and that um, my life would never be the same. And they were right about one thing, my life will never be the same, but not in a bad way. And as I was laying in my bed, contemplating everything I knew about natural wellness and how I had ended up in the situation I was in, crying out to God in isolation there in my hospital room, I said to God, what the heck just happened? What just happened? What what am I supposed to take from this? And I was really crying out to God in sorrow and in physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, in a sense, and crying out to God. I got a text from a friend and she was praying for me at that very moment. And I had an army of people praying for me. And she said, Michelle, I was just praying for you. And I feel like God wants you to know that the reason that you're going through this is because you were willing. Because you see, my life is not my own. It is God's and it is for him to use however he wants, whether that's in times of what the world sees as abundance or as whether the, the world would see it as pain and suffering. It's for him and it's for him alone. And my strength is made perfect in that weakness. And I can glory in my infirmities and the power of God will rest on me, me when I am walking not in my strength, but in the strength and the power of God. So what does life look like after the ventilator? When I left the hospital, I was given the prognosis of needing oxygen for the rest of my life. And I wanna go into a little bit of what it looks like for, a, um, for you to walk into the hospital with the severe case of COVID that I had. 
um, it was medical mayhem. Um, I went into the hospital uh, on uh, Monday, November 6th, and knowing I needed a breathing treatment, hoping that that was um, all I needed. And I went in that day, it was clear I had COVID. Um, I had lost my sense of taste and smell. Nobody was questioning that. And the doctor, who was an incredibly kind man, said, do you want a test? And I said, well, what, I mean, what would a test really show? We know I have COVID. Little did I know that me not getting a test was a really big deal as we walked through the next few days. Because at that time, before January 21st or so, um, the the regulation was if you didn't have a positive PCR test for COVID, they could not do anything uh, to treat you. Um, they could support you, but they couldn't use and do any treatment. And so not having that positive COVID test um, was actually a big deal. And so uh, the, the treatments that were available at the time were only remdesivir and the um, convalescent plasma. Those were the only things that they were allowed to use. And as you research remdesivir, one of the things that some people don't know is it's really only effective within the first five days of um, the, uh, you know, the getting to that point in the viral load where you're sick. And so getting, um, not having a posit te positive test made some of the treatments that they tried later uh, pretty much ineffective. And so they went, when I went back to the hospital a couple of days later, so sick, I was septic, and it took six hours for them to even evaluate my condition. And I was literally losing life by the moment. Um, I laid there and just wondering, okay, is this going to be it? And um, there was no traditional respiratory therapy. I wasn't evaluated by a respiratory therapist while I was in the first few days of the hospital because the whole key when you have COVID is isolation from their perspective. And so you do not get the treatment that you would normally get in a critical situation like that. Um, you are evaluated um, from a monitor in a, um, you know, not from face-to-face uh, -face contact. And so they really can't tell exactly what's happening because very rarely is someone even coming into the room unless a mon monitor has gone off and sometimes for a really long period of time before they actually come in to check on you. Um, so that was that's the policy, that's the procedure at the hospital. That's not necessarily the fault of the people that were trying to, that were part of my care, but that was the policy that they would only come in the room once every four hours unless a monitor went off. So they weren't really watching the decline from a clinical perspective. Um, and it got really bad really fast. Um, no one talked about nutritive support, even once I'd been on a ventilator for several days. Um, there was very little communication. A uh, couple of times they over, over medicated me dramatically. Uh, they gave me so much fentanyl when they intubated me that uh, they actually had to give me a dose of Narcan uh, to pull me out of that. So um, all of these things were part of my experience with the medical model. Again, um, once they there was the creation of the crisis that we were in, I am so thankful for the doctors that were able to swoop in and uh, help me. <laughs> but um, had there been a better approach earlier on, I don't know that I would have ended up in the situation that they were in. Uh, one of the tests that was never run um, until I got out of the hospital and I ran it myself was my vitamin D levels. And uh, my vitamin D was extremely low. Um, and we'll talk about that and the connection to COVID uh, in a little bit. Um, but what I do want to talk about most is the road to recovery because uh, the beauty of God's gift in this road to recovery is something that I will always be grateful for. I have learned so much about the body about the mind and about the spiritual connection to any struggle that we face. Uh, the physical representation of um, something like COVID, I always say is a highlighter to things that are already going on, whether they are physical, emotional, or spiritual. 
and uh, I just want to talk about what it looked like. We're going to talk about over here. I had a very welcoming terrain to this virus. Um, I was in a lot of stress because I didn't know how to say no. I didn't know how to define my boundaries and to um, really ask the Holy Spirit what it was that he wanted me to do every day. I was walking under the pressure of trying to meet the needs and expectations of others and then expectations that I had placed for myself that were not from God. And so one of the big things that was a welcoming terrain was I wasn't sleeping. Um, I was you know, going to bed sometimes two, three in the morning, getting up at six, six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning and working 12, sometimes 13 hour days. Um, and just pressing hard in, thinking that I was doing a good thing. And it wasn't that God doesn't use it. I'm so thankful that God is, uses even our weaknesses to bring about good things. So it wasn't that I wasn't able to have an impact with my clients each day. Um, God was doing incredible th things there. But when I got COVID, the, um, the, message from my savior was michelle come away with me and every day that i was on the ventilator i'd have this time where i would wake up and i would see the tiles in ahead of me in front of you know wherever they were at the time because i was turned all over the place uh, but i would see those tiles and i would hear the holy spirit so gently and kindly and with all the comfort of the world say michelle come away with me and my time on the ventilator could have been the most traumatic time of my life. And I'm not saying there wasn't trauma, there was, but there was so much beauty in it because I knew that God knew where I was and what I knew. And he knew that he had to do something big and allow something big in order for me to learn the beauty of coming away with Jesus and sitting with him and knowing that I was safe and I was at rest not because of anything anyone was doing for me, but because he was holding me and that he had a purpose and a plan for my life and that I could rest in him knowing that he would accomplish it. When they intubated me, I have this very clear memory, memory of that process. They were having a really hard time getting uh, me intubated. Um, my throat was extremely swollen. So they were having a hard time at getting uh, the tube even in and getting the placement right. And they were breathing for me with that bag. They had me on the paralytics. And I remember them saying, we're losing her. And that moment I was like, we well, haven't lost me yet because I just want you to squeeze that bag again. <laughs> um, but uh, in that moment was the most in-between place I've ever been. And it's a place I often go back to now. The in-between of knowing that it was okay if I go and it was okay if I stay. It was okay if Jesus took me home to be with him because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by him. And I knew that I had placed my faith and my trust in Jesus as my healer, not over through, not only through life situations here on earth, but my healer from the effects of sin and separation from God. And because I had put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I knew that if I died at that very moment, I would be safe in the arms of Jesus forever. I would be celebrating life more abundantly than I could have ever dreamed or hoped. And I had excitement and expectation for that and peace, knowing that God loves everyone that is uh, that relies on me more than I do, and that I can put them all safe, could put them safely in the hands of my God, who knows how to take care of all of us well. And in that moment, he brought me through that moment of saying, it's not on me. I can be invited to walk with him during the plans, uh, through the plans that he has, but it's not on me. And I can rest and place work out of a place of rest that says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And I can know that ultimately he is in control. And so when I come to this stress component, one of the biggest things that God has given me is strengthening my no muscle and my yes muscle, knowing that the yeses and nos that God allows in my life that he gives me strength for are from him. And when someone has a need that may seem urgent or even emergent, I can trust the power of the Holy Spirit of God to give me direction to know if that's something he's inviting me into or not. And I can walk and serve him out of a place of rest. One of the other problems that I was facing in because of that stress was poor nutritional planning. 
I knew what I needed to do. I knew that my body needed good nutrients, um, but especially during the shutdown and after I was working so much, I justified some of my um, eating foods that were not ideal from restaurants as uh, we're supporting this restaurant that's struggling so much. So I had a season of several months where I was not eating the way I would normally choose to eat. I was running around going hours and hours without eating and then all of a sudden eating weight things that were not good for me in a volume that was not good for me um, in the immediate in the evening and that caused my inflammation to go up I was completely inflamed and I knew it um, and I was having a hard time figuring out where to find um, some balance there and so one of the things that i've done now is i've simplified my nutrition with some great powders and chewables uh, in addition to the good fresh fruits and vegetables good healthy clean meats as well but um, i'm a big user of the um, nutritional frontier frontier shakes to fill in nutritional gaps uh, that might be there because of the life that God has called me to. And so I'm so thankful for the things that God gives us. When he calls us to something, God's work done, God's way will never lack God's supply. Hudson Taylor said that. And so as we walk forward, sometimes we think about that just as money, but he can provide the things that we need um, nutritionally as well. He can fill in the gaps um, if we don't have time to spend hours and hours in our kitchens. And in our gardens, he has allowed us to have access at this point in our lives, we may not have it forever, to other things that can keep us healthy and strong. Uh, the inflammation in my body was intense and um, coming out of um, the, coming home from the hospital, one of the things that has been a primary uh, situation in my life has been movement. Um, I was sitting all day uh, with clients before I got sick. When I came from home from the hospital, I didn't know what it would look like to start moving again because I was so weak. I had I could barely stand up. And so I am so thankful for physical therapists who've walked me through that journey. Um, I am able to not just walk, but I lift weights and I run and I am more active than I've been for years. Um, and that's with the prognosis of needing oxygen for life. How big is our God? Uh, working very intentionally with optimal hydration to keep my lymphatic system moving because that's been a key for my health and then getting regular chiropractic. Uh, there's so many other things that are important for a healthy terrain that is hostile to viruses and bacteria. And um, you've had so many speakers in the last few days who've spoken about that. I really encourage you to go back through um, Tracy's uh, talk yesterday on the lymphatic system and Judy's and Kim's, there's been a lot of good information. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time there. I'm gonna stay specific to recovery from COVID. I just got another call today from someone that said, hey, can you please help me? I am um, still struggling with the effects of COVID. And so uh, walking them through that has been a pleasure and a gift from God to be able to do that. So there's a few things that I use and uh, these are things I use pretty much every day. Some of them I phased in and out. Uh, you have to understand the the journey from COVID is kind of multifaceted and nobody can take 400 supplements at one time. And so I'm thankful for the wisdom and the advice from others and the gifts that God has given me to be able to really work in a systematic approach in my recovery, knowing that we cannot deal with everything all at once. When I came home, uh, this is part of the protocol that I uh, personally have used with success. Uh, I'm not giving medical advice for you. That's not my role but I will give you suggestions from my my experience of things that might be able to, um, I see a little typo on there, um, but <laughs> that, I, that I use. And so Air Max has been huge. Uh, one of the triggers for me with my lung health is definitely the histamine response. And Air Max has been extremely effective for me in keeping that histamine response under control uh, because of the quercetin. The, real quick. Yeah. Do you yeah. want people to see your slides? Are they not seeing them? Oh, man. No, you just got to share your screen down at the bottom. There's a little computer with the red slash. I did that. Hold on a second here. It's okay. I'll jump in. I have 47 questions anyway. Okay. I've been writing them down. <laughs> Why is that not working? I'm it's clicking okay. on it. So you hit share your screen, then you have to choose your application. In the box it pops up 
And you're going to choose the second option, application, and then click your PowerPoint. Okay. So what? Okay. There you go. Okay, we got it now. Now okay. you're going to, I'm going to disappear, and so are you, but you'll be able to see the slides. Okay, well, I'll go quick through these. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> you're about All right. You're good. So uh, we've got Air Max. Uh, we talked about that for the histamine response. We have a lot of other immune boosting things. Grape seed extract is a great purifier for the blood. I was exposed to x-rays every single day. Um, sometimes twice a day, four CTs. And so purifying my blood has been something I've been uh, extremely intentional about. This is one of the things that has been helpful for that. I won't go through it. You could go to uh, Nutritional Frontiers website, uh, the Weiner Wellness website. You can see more information about the function of each of the things in these, um, in these uh, supplements that I am suggesting to you today. But these are things that I've used Inner DMG, oh, how I love it with all, a lot of me, not all of me. Um, Inner DMG has been such a key uh, nutrient to be able to use in my recovery. I would tell you if, um, you know, you're working with a practitioner or um, walking through the COVID recovery and you are just one of the long haulers. Uh, go out and get a get, get some NRDMG. Talk to your doctor about using that uh, to help restore um, some of the balance in your body. Um, one of the things I hear about and experienced intensely, I'll never forget the first consult I did post COVID where like they're talking to me and I'm like, oh my goodness, I cannot remember anything. And I was like, hey, let me take your information. I'm going to write down everything you said. And I had to sit there with it because I had such brain fog. It was scary. Um, so uh, NRDMG, I increased my NRDMG and some pro oranges and um, very quickly saw a change in my physical and mental performance. I take NRDMG before and after every single workout. Um, and it is the difference. We check my oxygen probably four to six times through all of my workouts. Um, thankfully, before I got sick, I had a, my oxygen saturation was around 95. Today, my oxygen saturation stays between uh, 96 on a low day, and a lot of days I'm up to 97, 98, and 100 uh, with just complete restoration of my lung function. Um, it is strengthens both arms of the immune system. I put a lot of this from the Nutritional Frontiers site because it's just well worded, um, including your all of these different functions in the body and then circulation and vascular health. People don't understand what a big deal this is with COVID. Um, the blood gets very, very thick and sludgy um, in this process and we need to have good vas vascular integrity and NRDMG can help with that. It won't thin the blood, but it can help the body to have, uh, to help with the support in that movement in the vascular system. Helps with uh, blood pressure and cholesterol, triglycerides. Uh, interesting uh, little just tangent, not super tangent, totally related, but <laughs> something that's really interesting. You know, you hear so much about cholesterol. I had done all my blood work about two weeks before I got sick. And so I had all of my baseline um, numbers and they were, you know, some were slightly out of range, but my triglycerides were right around 100. When I went into the hospital, uh, they went all the way up to 426, two weeks later. Uh, so don't tell me that's the eggs you're eating. Don't tell me that's the food that is good and healthy and given that to me by God to eat. That has nothing to do with food. It was the body's beautiful response to inflammation in helping my body to have what it needed to deal with the situation at hand. Your body does not make mistakes. It is beautifully defined by, designed by God with all kinds of beautiful mechanisms in place when it's under stress and duress. And so um, that is one of the things that um, I just got to see in real time uh, was that huge jump in a couple of days. <clears throat> and that had nothing to do with a food I'd eat. It had everything to do with the inflammation because my body was doing what God designed it to do in healing. And then the physical and mental energy levels by reducing lactic acid, which has been a huge shoe. Um, my lactic acid went up like crazy um, because of the virus you know, ravaging my body. Um, but then when I was coming home and strengthening my muscles that were, you know, completely atrophied, I'd been in a bed for a month. Um, 
just walking, I was sore. Just, you know, walking from my my living room to the bathroom, I was sore. And uh, especially once I started doing physical therapy, I was um, sore all the time. And NRDMG helped tremendously with that. Uh, we want to optimize glutathione production. Glutathione is essential for lung uh, repair. It's essential for lung function for the tissue. The tissue of the lungs needs glutathione. It's important for ATP production. Again, refer to Tracy. She's done some really great talks on ATP production and how important it is uh, for fighting viruses and bacteria and even for uh, maintaining a healthy weight. And uh, so lean greens, I drink this at least once a day, um, but I actually probably drink two or three scoops a day right now um, because it has so many good things in it. Um, they have, it has the res registered um, trademark ingredient, Amotheon, which helps the body to, to produce glutathione. Um, and I am doing, I do like two or three scoops. Uh, I'll do a huge smoothie in the beginning of the day and I will sip on that throughout the day. Um, this has been key for my recovery. Um, there's, I'd like to come down and be like, if there was just one supplement, this has inner DMG in it. This has, um, so many good nutrients in it and it has been a really important part of what I've done. NAC, um, again, another really important factor for glutathione production. Um, it helps with the oxidative stress. It helps support the pulmonary and cardiac function. Um, almost always in ICU um, admitted cases like me, um, there is a cardiac issue. Um, mine was not, it was just stressed um, because I'd been having uh, heart palpitations for so long because of some hormonal imbalance and some stress and, and the, that contributed to the stress or both ways. Um, it's, it's not one way or the other. Hormones can affect um, your stress levels. Stress levels can affect your hormones. It's a two-way street. And so I was dealing with some of that that had affected my heart. So it was already weak uh, when I went into the hospital. And um, if you are sick or you have a predisposition for uh, heart-related issues, um, making sure that you have the proper nutrients to support that is really important. Um, the biggest thing that I have seen with the NAC personally, and again, I'm trying to keep this super personally, is the breaking down of the mucus in my respiratory tract. I take NAC and I, um, especially in the beginning, I would be clearing my throat, clearing my lungs um, all the time. And this was a huge part of just freeing up my lungs to be able to uh, work properly. And then power fuel. So I didn't even try to put a couple of little things. I just am going to scroll through some of the stuff that this does. It has so many good things in it. Um, unfortunately, it's out of stock. I don't even, you know, it'll come back in stock. But um, the power fuel has been, um, that was the key nutrient that I was actually able to get in the hospital. Um, I, once I was able to get on power fuel, it was only a couple of days before I was able to be discharged. I literally went from, um, not able to stand up to being able to pass all of the, um, tests that needed to happen to be able to walk out of the hospital, uh, in a two to three day period. Once I was able to incorporate this into my regimen. I'm just going to scroll through this because I could spend a day uh, lecturing on <laughs> this is the benefits of all of these ingredients. It's such the rhodiola has been a huge, uh, it's an adaptogen in the body when it's under so much stress, needs those adaptogens along with all of these other incredible nutrients that build, um, that give it, that drive those things the where they the rhodiola where it needs to go um so many good electrolytes i just cannot say enough a good good about power fuel i use this still before and ever, after every single workout my husband has been under a lot of stress at work right now he uses this regularly and has seen a huge change in his stamina and ability to go through a very stressful day without um without the fatigue and the, um, that, you know, the fatigue really that comes uh, with stress because this is really giving the body some optimal, helping you achieve optimal nutrition. 
an X flame. So one of the things people don't realize after they've gone through COVID, even if you didn't have as severe of a case as mine, is that a COVID will cause inflammation in all of the organs. Um, specifically, the pancreas has been, um, we've seen that. And uh, so when I got home from the hospital, I knew that there could be a problem with my pancreas, my blood sugar. Uh, so I have a little testing kit from Walmart. I was not diabetic pre-COVID, but I had a testing kit here just to kind of keep an eye on my blood sugar. And I noticed about uh, six weeks after I got home from the hospital that my blood sugar was starting to do some funky stuff. Um, so I started, I used the powdered form um, of X-Flame, but started incorporating that and right away, blood sugar went right back down. And it was just an inflammatory response that needed good nutrients to calm it down. And uh, I just think that's amazing that the body can respond like that uh, to the nutrients. That's not just COVID related. Um, sometimes we want to take a blood sugar supplement, but what we really need and, and what we're really getting from that in a supplement is the nutrients that we need to bring down the inflammation, but sometimes adding something that is for inflammation uh, will help calm down that whole system. Uh, so I uh, have used X flame. I used a little bit of sugar solve. Now I'm able to maintain healthy blood sugar with just the X flame and then power cleanse. Um, again, we talked about that cleaning out the blood from all of the effects of all the x-rays and uh, medicine um, or chemicals or whatever <laughs> that I was given in the hospital. And uh, power cleanse is something that our whole family enjoys. Uh, we drink this every day and make a gigantic smoothie with power cleanse and greens. And it is, it tastes excellent. Even for my kids that are picky, uh, they will still drink this and enjoy it. So um, I'm not, again, there's so much information you can find about these things. I'm just highlighting them as part of what I've used. I want to um, talk a little bit about tips to help you navigate COVID-19 hospitalization. We talked a little bit about how the situation is a little bit different now. Um, back before when I got sick, there were only a couple of treatments available. Um, but then right after, well, on around January 21st, we saw a huge change where ivermectin, um, hydrochloroquine, uh, remdesivir, and the plasma were all um, released as possible treatments for COVID-19. So I find that very, very interesting. Um, and uh, so as you navigate the hospital, here are some things um, that I really encourage you. And this is any hospitalization, not just COVID, but because of all of the isolation rules that are in effect right now, these are really important things to know. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions and make suggestions, especially with COVID in this area, because if there's anything that I saw while I was in the hospital is that they don't know. And they're not as, um, they're not as against suggestion as they would be in other instances because they know they don't know. And so I, um, was so thankful for actually Tracy, um, talking to my husband and then my husband advocating for me with making some, uh, suggestions, asking some, um, questions. And then um, that's really important. Don't be afraid of it, no matter how they make you feel. Um, thankfully, Shane, ha my husband is like the nicest guy in the entire world. And so nobody really gives him issues because he's just so nice. Um, I don't always have that gift that he has to not be um, confrontational when I ask a question. He's not. And so God really gifted him with the ability to have good conversations about my care um, that helped really get to, to, you know, the heart of what was going on when I wasn't able to advocate for myself. But maybe your spouse or your loved one um, is not gifted with that ability. And I really encourage you to reach out to someone who is gifted as an advocate if you are in the hospital right now for any reason, but specifically with COVID. Request vitamin D labs, uh, D3 labs at admission. Um, as soon as you go in, get them tested. I mean, you really should know anyway, but get them tested. You don't even have to know, just take vitamin D. But if you're admitted, I get really tan in the summer. And I was really stupidly relying on the fact that I'd been in the sun a lot in the summer and I had not taken any vitamin D in, uh, uh, almost a year or nothing consistently. 
When I checked my vitamin D about four weeks after hospitalization, when I had been taking 20,000 milligrams of, of vitamin D a day, my vitamin D was at 33. Um, so you can only guess what it was when I was admitted to the hospital. So just request that 97% uh, of um, ICU admissions are deficient in vitamin D3. And so this is a important nutrient that our bodies need. Um, you probably read it everywhere, all the things, but the reality is it's true. Our bodies do need vitamin D3, preferably from the sun, but thankfully we have other ways of getting it when we can't be um, in the sun. If you end up on, well, if you if you go, if you're in the hospital for more than a couple of days and you're not able to take in food by mouth, request IV nutrition as soon as possible. Um, this was a game changer for me. Uh, they gave me the remdesivir once I had a positive test. They gave me the um, the um, convalescent plasma. But I, I looked at my chart. I've literally read every entry <laughs> that was made in my chart while I was in the hospital. And there was no marked improvement in my case until they gave me nutrition. And, and honestly, it's crappy nutrition, but it's something, uh, what they offer there. If you have a really a doctor that is really uh, willing to go out outside the box and you can get all the pro colors and power fuel put into IV uh, or NG um, nutrition. Hey, ask for it. The worst they can say, the, but, but they can only say no. So check into that. And then this next uh, thing is so important um, for lung health. They put you on a lot of sedatives when you're on a ventilator and those repress lung function. And it could, took me until I was in step down to like be aware enough to realize what was happening. And um, finally, one day I just said, take me off of anything that's not life sustaining. And, you know, I was on, I don't even know how many medications all day long. And that brought me down to two things at that point, an inhaler and um, they had me on a blood thinner. And so at that, because I had blood clots. So at that point, I went from eight to 10 medications to two. And within 24 hours, and yes, I went through all of the withdrawal, I went from needing eight liters of oxygen to two liters of oxygen. And yes, it's uncomfortable. And I'm, you know, it might have been a little bit better to wean a little more slowly. But the reality is, as soon as they, you can make sure that you are weaning off of those um, or have, asking that your loved one is. Um, and then really asking the nurses and the doctors that are dealing with someone that is vented to really be aware of only only giving them as much as they need to be able to tolerate uh, ventilation. And here's my the hope is that you never need ventilation because you have great tools and you're going to create healthy boundaries and you're going to be innovative with your nutrition and you're going to start moving. But should you or someone you love end up in that situation, these are just good things to know. Have good supplements brought to your room um, if you are just having to be admitted. I have never seen the medical world more open to supplementation than they are right now. So we had no problems. We asked for supplementation. We were able to bring things into my room. And once I was in step down, and that made a huge difference. And then since then, I have been able to um, give you know, speak into some other situations where people were hospitalized and we were um, able to get supplements in their room before they got to the point where they needed uh, the ventilator. So know that that is an option um, for a lot of people. And if they say no, ask who else you can talk to. Um, because if you keep, if you push politely, kindly, um, you should be able to get that integrated in a safe and effective way uh, for your health. Don't assume anything. Don't assume anything's happening that you uh, would think would happen. Um, ask, you know, if they're regularly being able to uh, use the your your patient, your whoever you're in a relationship with, whether it's a friend or yourself. Uh, if you're advocating for someone, don't assume anything. Um, they the struggles of the way that they are handling patients in isolation right now, even being able to use the restroom uh, regularly, being able to uh, move around your room with assistance, um, asking for respiratory therapy. Isn't it crazy that I actually had to ask for respiratory therapy after I came off the ventilator? That doesn't even make sense. That should be a given. 
And even after, after I asked for respiratory therapy, uh, they only gave me, the respiratory therapist only came in twice. Um, so percussion is so effective for keeping the lungs moving. I have my physical therapist do percussion three times a week to keep my lungs uh, moving. Um, you, I put ask for physical therapy twice, like that's how important I feel like it is. Ask for those things. They're hesitant because they don't want to be in the room with you for very long. Um, but it is under your rights to ask for the care that you need if you are hospitalized and don't be afraid of that. And you can do it, you can do it kindly, but you can do it boldly as well. And so don't be afraid of that. But when we come to the end of um, my part of this presentation, I want to talk to those of you who are so scared. You know, as you hear my story about the ventilator, the last thing I want you to do is to come into that and hear that story and be like, oh my goodness, I need to do everything I can to avoid this situation. I don't want that to happen to me. Shoot my arm with the, up with a vaccine, whatever I need to do. Let me reach for every possible way to protect myself out of a place of depression because you've been isolated for so long, out of a place of fear because you are afraid of the effects of something like what happened in, happened to me happening to you. And so much of our world is so depressed right now. They are so cast down. And David says it so well. Why are you cast down, oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him who is the health of my countenance. Hope thou in God. There is no supplement. There is no nutrient. There is no practice. There is no thing that you can do that should replace your hope in God because he is the giver of good things. And when we come into our health, worshiping the creation over the creator, we are not walking in line with the Holy Spirit of God. And we are brought to a place of reaching and reaching and reaching, trying to fill a void that only God can fill. And if I have any message to leave you with today, don't be afraid. Don't be cast down. Put your hope in Jesus, who is our master physician. He knows all things. He can lead you to whatever it is that he wants you to use to be able to see and to glorify and to praise him with the health of your countenance. And, you know, if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Um, my business is Harbor of Hope Healing Services. I love spending time with the connection of the emotional, physical, spiritual connection to what's going on in our health. Honoring Jesus is the master physician. And uh, that's my heart and my desire as I uh, have opportunity to share with the people that God brings across my path. That is awesome. Thank you so much. What an incredible testimony. Uh, just coming out on the other side and <clears throat> being healthier than ever. So who would have right. thought, right? And I think that's what Robert was saying. Like we all are brought to something uh, that yeah. gives us that wake up moment. Of like, Absolutely. This is it. Pay attention. Yeah. 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 So I love that quote too. Um, so you were saying that I think the the pathways are a little different now. But I know you had mentioned one time the convalescent plasma they gave you in the beginning. Do you think that created any types of problems in your body? I know they're trying to use it to stimulate yeah. the immune system, but I know you had spoke a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I honestly can't, I don't know for sure. I know that I'm, um, I've had some unusual things happening in my body, but it's hard to tell what's what. Um, I have spent a little bit of time researching the convalescent plasma. I can see why it would be beneficial. Um, I can also see why it would cause some issues. I think the convalescent plasma had an effect on the blood, the clotting issue, um, because it will, plasma um, is, a, you know, it will thicken the blood. And I think that it probably had a, um, 
impact on the clotting issue that I experienced in the hospital with the leg clots. I uh, didn't talk about this, but they gave me so many blood thinners in the hospital, which I knew it was too many, and I said it was too many, and they assured me that it was in totally protocol. <laughs> protocol. And um, so I got home and I stood up one day and I was like, oh my goodness, my leg hurts a lot. And I knew it couldn't be a blood clot and it wasn't. I was bleeding out right into my leg with an INR of 11.3, which if you know anything, it should be between one and two. Uh, I really literally, once I realized my NNR, INR, I was like, don't let me move. <laughs> I knew that any kind mm -hmm. of injury could be, uh, that's all. So, um, yeah, that so in relationship to the convalescent plasma, um, we have to think about what it's doing in the body. And um, though it may be offering some good things, you know, risk versus benefits, um, I didn't really have a part in that conversation <laughs> since I was so sick. So I, you know, that was one of the things I've had to walk through is all the things that were just being thrown into my IV. Um, but um, there are going to be negatives when we when we use plasma. So yeah. that's what they used to thicken my blood after I had too thin of blood. Right. So, you know. So just so people understand, they use plasma from donors mm -hmm. that have had COVID. And so right now there's a, a demand for plasma for people that have had the infection. Mm -hmm. So they go, they give the plasma. And then for someone like Michelle who goes in and tests positive, they can give the plasma with the theory that it will help create antibodies against mm -hmm. the virus. So, but it also has a secondary effect where plasma it, at a certain INR will thicken the blood. Yeah. And you had what, two bags of plasma in the beginning going in? Or uh, what? For which, you know, for the convalescent? As the uh, prevention, yeah, as the preventative or as the, as the Like when I first got in the hospital, well, mm -hmm. once I was, uh, I think four. Okay, so that's a lot. So then mm -hmm. they counter that with blood thinners. Right. So you mm -hmm. get the blood thinner so that you don't get the thickening of the blood. And then they kept you on the blood thinner and didn't seem to check your INR, which that's just basically how thick or thin the blood is. Yeah. And what happened is Michelle's blood from the thinners got so thin that she literally was bleeding out at the yeah. capillary level. Yeah. So um, that's when they started to give you plasma again. But that was a whole story in itself because, see, I was on that. Well, you were <laughs> unconscious and in the hospital. I was on the conscious end on the phone yeah. with Shane most of the time saying, okay, do this, say this, because he's so nice. And I'm like, we need to be mean. You need to be mean. Get up there and, and march to that nurse's station. Like, be strong. <laughs> Poor Shane. He, had a, he, he knew that you, you couldn't say it, so I was saying it for you. Mm -hmm. um, but he did a great job and there was a big prayer group. And I know that we pulled in other people like L Dr. Len Bransowitz, who, you know, from all of this uh, turmoil, you came out with some great relationships with people oh, that, really. uh, you know, really were invested and concerned about you. So um, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad it wasn't your time. Right. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate that you share your story because there is a lot of questions. People are afraid to go to the hospital. But here's what I'll say from November until now or December until now, there's a there's a lot of other information that has come right. to fruition. Uh, like we say, science is evolving, treatment protocols, um, you know, and there there are ways and doctors that do a good job with the management of COVID-19. Right. So you just have to find them, you know, yeah. you just have yeah. to find them. So just make sure that if you are susceptible, uh, that you have that in the background, somebody that's going to have the latest treatment protocols and understands your condition. There are things that you can do that Michelle said, even if you are in the group of susceptibility of high inflammation or maybe unstable blood sugar, uh, you know, being overweight. I mean, that's just part of a comorbidity. You're on numerous medications. Uh, you know, you have a respiratory issue. Uh, you're elderly, there are nutrients, and Michelle went over them today that you can use every single day to build the immunity and that fortress of defense. And then even if you do uh, contract the virus, that doesn't mean infection. That's what Judy was talking about yesterday, that a virus in your nose is not infecting your body. Your body sees it, grabs it, and then starts 
to either through the innate or adaptive immune system begin to destroy it, it doesn't mean you're gonna get an infection. So you're right about not having fear and understanding. And the more they hear these stories and the more that they listen to these lectures and workshops, they can understand that their body is really designed to save your life. It, it's gonna try really, really hard. Um, so thank you for being brave and, and we'll continue for your recovery. Although you're, you're doing fabulous. So yeah, I'll just pray for your fab fabulousness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if they want to get in touch with you uh, regarding yeah. your protocol or can you give us some information on how to find you? Um, my um, email is Michelle Kunselman at gmail.com. Um, and then um, you can reach me by phone 724-372-2127. And uh, if I think Tracy has my acuity link, if you need to schedule consult, she, you can get that from her. So oh, thanks. Now, now I'm your secretary. Well, you told me to <laughs> give you it. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll post it. And uh, if you want to, you know, talk to Michelle about COVID recovery programs, just her experience in general, mm -hmm. you know, it's always good to have somebody to talk to or make an appointment or whatever that looks like you know, for them personally. So I have your link. I'll post it on the, um, the chat and, uh, thanks again. So, yep. well, this wraps up our day of education. Thank you so much, everybody for being here at the Weiner wellness virtual summit. Remember we are open, come in shop, get your products, deep discounts, 30% off all supplements and CBD. And, you know, as we heard from Michelle and Judy Mikovits yesterday, that reducing inflammation is number one. You have to keep the inflammation under control regardless of what the physical manifestation of that inflammation is, whether it's a disease or you know, weight or whatever that looks like. Uh, inflammation is key. So feeding the endocannabinoid system, getting the, the products that your body needs and can utilize for nutritional pathways, X-Flame, Inflam, uh, CBD, all available at the Weiner Wellness Center. So stop in, say hi, make an appointment, and we're just so glad you're here. Thank you for joining us today. And we will be back tomorrow morning at 830. God bless.